power of bloodlines is indeed strong. The physique of the demon clan empress really does take after her mother. This person is the queen of the holy demon emperor, the mother of Luo Feng Yuan, Wu Xinxiu. Such a physique is truly unparalleled in the world. Just now, Luo Tao Yin was rescued. He immediately ran off carrying the body of Zhang Buki. Indeed, soon after, a violent explosion was heard from behind. Looking at the flames that shot up into the sky, Luo Tao Yin couldn't help but mutter, it's really not safe to stay here for long. Brother Xiao didn't lie to me. At this moment, a group of men and women from the demon clan suddenly appeared. They quickly approached Luo Tao Yin. Wu Xinxiu looked surprised. Luo Tao Yin, what's going on? The others, either calling him brother or father, all began to ask questions. Luo Tao Yin threw Zhang Buki's body to the side. Why are you all here? Wu Xinxiu threw herself into his arms. We were originally discussing how to rescue you from Pioneer Battle City, but then we heard a loud explosion. When we came out, we saw that Pioneer Battle City had been blown to the heavens. We hurried over to check the situation. She looked to the side. Is this Zhang Buki? How did he die? Luo Tao Yin glanced away. Let's go back first. This is not the place to talk. Wu Xinxiu adjusted her hair. That's correct. There's too much commotion here. We might have already alerted other station troops. It's better to go back to our defensive lines to avoid them pursuing us. The group of demon clan men and women immediately nodded in agreement. Soon after, everyone returned to the camp. Luo Tao Yin gathered everyone and began to speak. My fellow comrades, the Blood Rune clan general Zhang Buki has fallen. Pioneer Battle City has been taken. He glanced at Zhang Buki, who was nailed to the wall. Remember this everyone. The one who killed Zhang Buki is a powerful human, known as the Supreme Benevolent King of Hell Deity, named Xiao Tian. The crowd instantly erupted. Heavens have opened their eyes. Blood Rune General got what he deserved. Wait, who is this Supreme Benevolent King of Hell Deity Xiao Tian? Who cares who he is? If he could kill Zhang Buki, he is the ultimate powerhouse. Looks like your human race has gained some face. Many humans exchanged glances. All had the same question. Who is Xiao Tian? Is he human? I've never heard of him. At this moment, Luo Tao Yan suddenly asked Wu Xinxiu, has there been any anomalies with Little Yuan's bloodline lamp? There indeed has been an anomaly, and it's not small. Upon hearing this, Luo Tao Yan immediately became excited. What? We must hurry back to the hall where the bloodline lamps are kept. Little Yuan's bloodline lamp must not go out. Saying this, Luo Tao Yan rushed off in a certain direction, but as soon as he pushed open the door, a blinding light immediately shone out. Luo Tao Yan was stunned. Why is it still lit? Goodness, when you said anomaly, you meant it became too bright? Wu Xinxiu wore a helpless expression. After you were captured, I came here to take a look, wanting to observe your condition, but as soon as I came in, I found that Little Yuan's bloodline lamp had turned into this. Right now, at the center of the Grand Hall, there floats an enormous fireball, resembling a proud sun. The lamps of other people below are no bigger than fists. Luo Tao Yan muttered to himself, is this what they call a firefly dares to compete with the sun and moon? This is way too big. Wu Xinxiu slowly spoke. The problem now is, Little Yuan's lamp is still expanding. This small hall can barely contain it anymore. Luo Tao Yan thought for a moment, then let's move it to the main hall. Such a big lamp shouldn't go to waste. Let's use it for illumination. Wu Xinxiu laughed. You really are something. Jealous of your own daughter? Isn't this a good thing? It was because her bloodline was the weakest that we left her in the holy demon realm. Now, she has grown stronger than all of us. She has evolved from being the last spark of the holy demon clan to becoming a great son. Luo Tao Yan's eyes turned red. How could I be jealous? This girl, Wu Xinxiu sensed something was off and couldn't help but tease. Look at your temper. The numerous princes and princesses immediately chimed in. We are also very jealous. Exactly. By the way, you haven't yet explained what exactly happened at the pioneer battlefield. Wu Xinxiu suddenly asked. Luo Tao Yan paused for a moment. Well, this time I made a new brother, called Supreme Benevolent King of Hell Deity Xiao Tian. You should have seen him. This brother Xiao is extraordinary. At this moment, Xiao Tian had just returned from blowing up Pioneer Battle City. Looking at the captured battleships, he asked, Can these things be modified? Long Chiodao thought for a moment. Shouldn't be difficult. We've seized quite a lot of spoils this time. Reforging ten such void battleships would be more than enough. Upon hearing this, Xiao Tian patted Long Chiodao on the shoulder. Your level of awareness leaves room for criticism. Although they are our enemies. These resources were offered out of genuine repentance and love. How could you describe them as spoils of war? Long Chiodao felt awkward. Ah, yes, I was mistaken. Thank you for the enlightenment. Xiao Tian crossed his arms and nodded. Recognizing your mistakes is never too late. Remember to add a large bathhouse and a big kitchen to this battleship. Don't forget. Long Chiodao hastily bowed. Don't worry Lord Xiao. I'll try to direct the renovations of this void battleship towards comfort. Suddenly, Xiao Tian remembered something else. There's one more thing. The people from the Blood Rune clan, who were imprisoned in the holy dragon relic. Take care of them too. Send them to work at the green flame farm. They are short-handed there due to expansion. Let them atone for their sins through labor. Let sweat cleanse their souls. Long Chiodao continued to bow. Understood. Rest assured, Lord Xiao. But he couldn't help but think to himself, with this treatment, might as well let them die like Ji Yichuan from the Blood Grudge clan and be done with it. Alright, go do your work. Zhong Yang Ming, come make breakfast with me 
Everyone, let's get moving. Zhong Yang Ming and Wang Chiodao cooperatively struck a pose. Good. Xiao Tian also timely yelled. Go for it. Heavy holy dragon cavalry. Both men felt like crying, but couldn't. Lord, there's no need to say the title out loud. We still want to save face. Not long after, Xiao Tian returned to the royal residence. As soon as he entered, he was blocked by his wife and children at the door. Xiao Yuer was floating in the air with crossed legs. Daddy, you're back. Zi Royan had an unhappy face. Where were you yesterday? Faced with the pressure from his two empress wives, Xiao Tian scratched his head and explained. Something came up at the last minute. A new group from the Blood Rune clan arrived. Now that my injuries are a bit better, I joined Long Chiodao in resolving the situation. We also took care of those who used the blood curse technique from the Blood Grudge clan. Upon hearing this, Zi Royan spoke. It seems I guessed right. With that, she pointed to the side. Look over there. Xiao Tian followed her gaze and was shocked to find. Above by Qing lying there, a pure white dragon spirit was circling non-stop. The traces of the blood curse technique were also slowly disappearing. Zi Royan frowned. Although you're back, you also need to be careful with your body. Don't push yourself if your injuries aren't healed. Fortunately, you didn't get hurt this time. Xiao Tian quickly stepped forward to rub her shoulders. Don't worry, I've been recovering very quickly recently. Even gained a bit of strength. It's just that using force jolted my insides a bit. My energy is somewhat depleted. Upon hearing this, Zi Royan immediately looked worried. Grabbed Xiao Tian's hand to examine it. As expected, Xiao Tian's meridians were constantly pulsing. Felt like they were playing music. But why would there be such a rhythm out of the blue? You must have gotten hurt. Zi Royan became somewhat angry. I just told you. How could you be so careless? Luo Feng Yuan also hurriedly approached. Brother Xiao damaged his energy. What are we going to do? Zi Royan pondered for a moment. Her cheeks slightly flushed. The only solution for now is, tonight, when we go to sleep, we'll use mutual supplementation to replenish his energy. Luo Feng Yuan nodded with a smile. Indeed that's an option. Last time when Brother Xiao was looking at that book as he slept, I glanced at it while cleaning up. We can use the method of harmonizing Yin and Yang to fill the energy gap. Xiao Tian looked hopeful. It's all my fault. I'll definitely cooperate tonight. At this moment, accompanied by Bai Qing's dragon spirit becoming free. After a roar, the dragon spirit returned to Bai Qing's body. The previously sleeping Bai Qing suddenly opened her eyes. Under everyone's gaze, Bai Qing calmly stood up and softly said to everyone, let's get reacquainted. My name is Bai Qing, dragon empress of the sacred dragon lineage, one of the commanders in the meteor flame battlefield. Battlefield commander designated by the United Alliance of a Hundred Tribes. Luo Feng Yuan and Zi Ruoyan were both confused. United Alliance of a Hundred Tribes? Battlefield commander? Even though I don't understand, it sounds very impressive. I wonder if I could win in a fight against her. Suddenly, Bai Qing looked at the two of them, pointed to her own face and said, Both of you, though I don't mind being cuddled by you for rest, please be a bit more considerate. Lord Xiao wasn't here last night. Cuddling with me is one thing. But why? While you were cuddling with me, did one of you try to bite my face and the other try to lick it? At these words, both became instantly awkward, not knowing what to say. Xiao Tian suddenly reacted. Weren't you knocked out by me? How could you know what happened? Bai Qing pointed to a tuft of purple and yellow fur on the blanket. With such obvious evidence, the answer is clear. Furthermore, you both intentionally, after getting drunk, vent emotions and relieve stress. During my amnesia, I've seen quite a bit of that. Of course, during the days of my amnesia, I also had significantly lowered self-control. Saying this, Bai Qing looked at Xiao Tian. During my amnesia, I apologize for the irrational acts I have done towards the overly tempting and delicious Lord Xiao. Zi Ruoyan was utterly surprised. You said tempting? Luo Feng Yuan looked even more like she was facing a formidable foe. What do you mean by delicious? Bai Qing, unbothered, looked at Xiao Tian. Haven't you noticed? His very existence makes it hard for people to not make mistakes. The aura he exudes is like the world's most delicious delicacies. Just by staying near Lord Xiao, my injuries recover quickly. Even my internal body starts to cultivate on its own. My sacred dragon lineage is also constantly strengthening. Therefore, it caused me, who had lost my memory and had weaker self-control, to uncontrollably engage in licking behavior. Zi Ruoyan simply couldn't believe it. What a joke. How is that possible? Luo Feng Yuan also hadn't noticed. You're right. How could it be so mystical? We've also tried it many times, and there's been no effect. Hearing her slip of the tongue, Zi Ruoyan was somewhat disappointed. Can you be a little more reserved in front of others? Luo Feng Yuan just shrugged. Reserved about what? Aren't we discussing the issue here? Zi Ruoyan almost lost her composure. Luo Kao, you've really had enough. Hearing the two talk like this, Bai Qing also began to doubt. No effect? That can't be. Could it be that this effect only comes into play when in a severely injured state? Saying this, Bai Qing moved next to Xiao Tian. No, I can clearly feel that my cultivation speed is accelerating. Don't you guys notice any anomalies compared to before? Bai Qing even placed her hand on Xiao Tian. Look, especially after physical contact, the amplification effect is particularly noticeable. Luo Feng Yuan seemed to think of something, whispered into Zi Ruoyan's ear. It seems like there is something to it, especially after that one night. The effects are even more terrifying. Zi Ruoyan suddenly grew concerned. Did we somehow take something
hearing from Lord Xiao, both quickly asked, Lord Xiao, will this have any impact on you? Do you feel uncomfortable? Lord Xiao, do you feel anything wrong? Xiao Tian nonchalantly shrugged, I don't feel uncomfortable at all. Ever since the first time I met you, I've only gotten better and better, and being summoned by you, I've felt comfortable and happy every moment. Don't worry, I'm in excellent health. If you insist that I've given up something to allow you to experience such changes, I think, it must be love. Zi Ruoyan had a radiant smile. I also think summoning you here was the most correct thing I've ever done. Both looked at each other, and a strong feeling of love enveloped the two. All was said without words. Luo Feng Yuan looked on with jealousy from the side. So what if she came here before me? What's so great about that? Hearing this, Bai Qing calmly explained. In a sense, it's perfectly reasonable that whoever comes first in matters like this gets priority. Don't fret too much about it. Suddenly, Luo Feng Yuan had a daring idea. Since you feel so comfortable by Xiao brother's side, why not just be with him? Bai Qing was dumbfounded. What are you doing? Do you even know what you're saying? Luo Feng Yuan patted her on the head. Once you join in, the two of us can team up against Zi Ruoyan. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Bai Qing turned her head in resignation. Uncle Luo and Aunt Wu said you've been off since you were born. It really is true. Luo Feng Yuan's eyes lit up. So you do know about my royal father and mother? I do indeed. Originally, they were worried that if they died in battle one day, you'd be heartbroken and completely collapse emotionally. That's why they tried to keep it from you. She glanced at Luo Feng Yuan, but as it stands now, you seem to be doing much better than expected. Your soul seems to be increasingly stable. It seems they don't have to worry about you anymore. Luo Feng Yuan seemed somewhat puzzled. Is that so? But the next second, she licked her lips. So, about that proposal of mine, do you accept or not? Bai Qing was at a loss for words, feeling a headache coming on. Didn't I just change the subject? Why can this guy bring it right back so directly? Luo Feng Yuan thought to herself, Bai Qing is also an empress, and she's close to my parents. She's on my side. So if we ever have to fight against Zi Bun, wouldn't we be guaranteed to win? Thinking this, Luo Feng Yuan suddenly moved forward and picked up Bai Qing. Bai Qing was taken by surprise. As Luo Feng Yuan tossed her towards Xiao Tian, Xiao brother, catch, Xiao Tian, who was talking with Zi Ruoyan, heard the call and instinctively turned his head. But before Bai Qing could collide with him, Zi Ruoyan had already flashed in front of Xiao Tian and caught her. Bai Qing stared blankly, muttering thanks. But Zi Ruoyan scolded, Luo Dairy Cow, what are you doing? With that, she threw Bai Qing back. Luo Feng Yuan didn't hold back either, and a resigned Bai Qing, who was treated like a sandbag, began to wonder, did I live too comfortably during my days of lost memory, that my reactions have become so slow? I can't take this anymore. The next second, white lightning instantly enveloped Bai Qing, forcing Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan to retreat. Zi Ruoyan flicked off the lightning on her hand. Ah, the little girl is getting interesting. Luo Feng Yuan also smiled. This is the first time I've seen you take the initiative. Bai Qing was speechless for a moment, as lightning burst from her again, and the three immediately fell into a melee. Xiao Tian looked on, contemplating, what a memorable day. The first battle of the three emperors has begun. I wonder how Zhong Yangming's breakfast is coming along. At that moment, in the green flame farm, Zhang Jiji, who was previously captured, shouted, what is our slogan? Everyone shouted in unison, work off our sins through labor, let sweat cleanse our souls. What is our spirit? Follow Master Zhao's teachings, adorn ourselves with kindness, decorate ourselves with benevolence, correct ourselves with justice. So, before breakfast, we can rest. But what should we do? Work hard, study hard, reform ourselves. Everyone was fired up. Let's go. Master Xiao was right. Our current battlefield is the Green Flame Farm. Not long after, as everyone was diligently shoveling manure, the mayor's voice rang out. Team leader, we have newcomers. Zhang Jiji turned around and saw a group of Bloodroom clan warriors behind the mayor, staring blankly at him. The mayor cheerfully introduced them to Zhang Jiji. Team leader, these are the newcomers. Everyone was dumbfounded. We're not going to have to do these chores too, are we? If so, I'd rather die. Suddenly, the commander pointed an alarm. Is that the deputy commander? The squad leader's eyes widened in disbelief. Zhang Zhu is being used as a ball by those pigs? Zhang Wushuang felt a cold sweat. My deputy commander, how could he suffer such humiliation? The key is, he looks happy about it. Zhang Jiji leaned in disdainfully. No need to be so surprised. Zhang Zhu earned this. He provided Master Xiao with information about our blood rune clan. Commander was trembling with anger. I must have been out of my mind to believe his main quality was loyalty. Then, ready to charge at Zhang Zhu. Zhang Jiji saw this and quickly ordered others to restrain him. Commander was immediately pinned to the ground. Zhang Jiji yelled at Zhang Wushuang. Zhang Wushuang, know your place. You are now a labor reform prisoner of Green Flame Farm. What will you do if your yelling scares the pigs? You need to forget your past. Our current battlefield is Green Flame Farm, understand? Zhang Wushuang was shocked. His eyes filled with tears. Has Zhang Jiji gone mad? Zhang Jiji then turned to the mayor. Mayor, may I request a postponed breakfast time? I want to conduct ideological education for these newcomers until they come to their senses. I won't let them eat a single grain of Master Zhao's rice or drink a drop of his water. The mayor patted Zhang Jiji on the shoulder. Sure, no problem at all. I trust your judgment. Zhang Jiji looked at Zhang Wushuang, satisfied. Don't worry, I'll make sure you understand the
the gravity of your past crimes. Meanwhile, Zhong Yangming had prepared dinner. The three empresses were seated, and Long Chiodao arrived late, noticing something was off. The empress's spiritual energy fluctuations are intense, just like they've been in a battle. How strange. Just in time for dinner, everyone sat down and began eating, when suddenly, Zi Ruoyan asked Bai Qing. Bai Qing, Lord Xiao risked his own health to join forces with Long Chiodao to eliminate the one who cast the blood curse technique on you. You should know the reason behind it. Why don't you share the information we want? Saying this, Zi Ruoyan looked up at her. Stunned for a moment, Luo Feng Yuan also asked, Don't they serve meals where you fight? Bai Qing had her mouth full, her chopsticks moving non-stop. She mumbled to them, Of course they serve meals, but the taste is far inferior. We can eat and talk at the same time. Don't waste Prime Minister Zhong's hard work. Zi Ruoyan also looked dissatisfiedly at Luo Feng Yuan. Let's not concern ourselves with these trivial matters for now. Let's be serious. Shall we start with the first matter? Bai Qing nodded. Go ahead. What is the situation with Luo Feng Yuan's parents? Upon hearing this, Luo Feng Yuan couldn't believe it. I didn't expect you to ask about my parents. Seeing her expression, Zi Ruoyan leisurely explained. Haven't you been troubled by this for a long time? Instead of letting you obsess over it alone, it's better to just ask. Then, Luo Feng Yuan leaned in and whispered. In that case, can you be considerate tonight? I want to be with Xiao brother. Shut up. You don't. But Luo Feng Yuan's clenched fists expressed. I really want to. When Bai Qing spoke up during a break in eating, Uncle Luo and Aunt Wu often mention her. What specifically would you like to know? Luo Feng Yuan became excited. I want to know everything. In my memory, they died fighting amongst themselves, and I became the demon emperor by killing my brothers and sisters with my own hands. Luo Feng Yuan said, trembling. Why? Why did they do that? Bai Qing slowly put down her chopsticks. Uncle Luo and Aunt Wu said, among their 19 children, you were the one with the weakest bloodline but the greatest potential, with a strong soul but prone to rage. So they always pampered you, afraid your emotions would cause your body to break down. For years ago, Meteor Flame Battlefield was in crisis, so we had to ask for help from the Holy Demon Royal Family. I offered bloodline inheritance as a condition, so your father agreed to go to war. The so-called bloodline inheritance method requires one to peel away a part of one's own bloodline to pass on the kin. Your parents, brothers, and sisters all had the resolve to die on the battlefield to protect you. They all offered up their bloodline, creating avatars to act as your enemies. In the illusion your mother created, they became the villains on your path to the throne. When you killed their avatars, that's when you inherited the bloodline they offered you. Even the cosmic gifts that were granted when the 18th prince's legitimate human imperial bloodline fully coalesced national fate were left to you to strengthen your body, eliminating the risk of your body collapsing. Luo Feng Yuan's eyes filled with tears upon hearing the truth. Mother is so ruthless. How miserable I felt in her illusion. The happier I am in my real memories. Suddenly, she looked at Xiao Tian beside her. It used to be really painful. It felt like my head could explode at any time. After meeting you, that rarely happens. Could that be why you say I'm not smart? Zi Ruoyan thought for a moment. Regarding that, my opinion remains the same. The nourishment went to the wrong place. Hearing this, Luo Feng Yuan burst out laughing. My parents, brothers, and sisters gave up so much. Do you think they're also not smart or just foolish? Xiao Tian gently wiped the tears from her eyes. They're not foolish. They love you very much. Cherish this affection. After all, you are loved by your family. Xiao Yu suddenly came over. Daddy, Xiao Yuer loves you too. Luo Feng Yuan simply pounced. He, Xiao brother is also part of my family. Zi Ruoyan really wanted to go over, but held back. Everyone was smiling at the scene, except for Bai Qing, who was incredibly busy. Luo Feng Yuan, holding Xiao Tian, suddenly thought of something. What about my parents? Will the loss of that part of their bloodline affect them? Bai Qing chewed her food. The impact won't be significant. It's just that the martial spirit army has been making frequent moves. We're outnumbered and have faced several ambushes. Luo Feng Yuan became angry. What about my parents? It was already fraught, but because of a mysterious powerful individual who clashed with someone, a major crisis was averted. At that time, the martial spirit army had gathered and was pressing against our forces. Just as we were preparing for a desperate fight, the sky over meteor flame battlefield shattered, falling right above the heads of the martial spirit army. A massive spatial turbulence directly tore apart tens of thousands of martial spirit army elites. Based on the situation at the time, the unknown powerful individual who could tear space seems to have been fighting someone in the spatial layers. The losing individual, his curses before dying almost echoed across the entire battlefield. Everyone became curious. What did he curse? Bai Qing mimicked the tone. You damn thing. You'll die a bad death. Hearing this, Xiao Tian, who was drinking water, choked a bit. Xiao Yuer quickly asked. Daddy, are you alright? Did Xiao Yuer hug you too tightly? Xiao Tian waved his hand. No, I just choked. But when he looked up, he found Bai Qing staring at him oddly. Xiao Tian awkwardly closed his eyes. He communicated with Long Chiu Dao. Could this be from when we killed corpse heart demon Long Chiu Dao? Long Chiu Dao picked up his cup to hide his expression. Mr. Xiao, that's likely the case. The area where the holy dragon relic was, is where the spatial layers are. They never would have guessed that the so-called unknown powerful individual is actually sitting right with them. Bai Qing continued. After the crisis,
crisis was averted. I was about to go to the United Alliance of a Hundred Tribes for assistance. Unfortunately, I was ambushed. Uncle Luo saved me but was captured. Luo Feng Yuan suddenly became agitated. My father was captured. They were after the secret Uncle Luo holds. People from the Blood Grudge Clan and Blood Rune Clan. They want to know why Uncle Luo never runs out of demonic energy and why he gets stronger as he fights. So for now, Uncle Luo is still safe. Suddenly, Xiao Tian shouted urgently, Wait a minute. You said the one who was captured is her father. Holy Demon Emperor Luo Tao Yin? Bai Qing nodded. Yes. And it was the Blood Rune Clan's General Zhan Buki who led it. Is there a problem? Xiao Tian awkwardly smiled. No problem. But internally, he was cursing. No problem my foot. The man I saved on the meteor flame battlefield. My good sworn brother. Turns out to be my second father-in-law. Xiao Tian felt choked up. He had told Long Chiu Dao and Zhong Yang Ming about his life-saving sworn brother's situation on the warship. Is it too late to silence them now? Meanwhile, Long Chiu Dao and Zhong Yang Ming were trying their best not to laugh. Laugh and their life is over. But the moment they thought of the day when Xiao Tian would introduce Luo Tao Tian to Luo Feng Yuan as this is my big brother, both couldn't help but feel the urge to burst into laughter. Z Royan then looked at Luo Feng Yuan. The illusion your mother set up for you has been lifted. Do you have any clues in your memories about the secret behind your ever-increasing battle power? Luo Feng Yuan shrugged. Didn't you hear by Qing? I've been abnormal since I was a child. How would I know any clues? Z Royan didn't want to give up. Think carefully. Knowing the enemy's objective would help us better prepare. Luo Feng Yuan gave up thinking and raised her fist. You all say my brain's not good. How could I possibly figure it out? Why not just go and save my father? Z Royan looked at her disdainfully. Ah, right, right. You also have Holy Demon Emperor's bloodline. Going there would be like delivering yourself to them. Luo Feng Yuan didn't understand what she meant and mumbled, delivering ourselves to wipe them out. What's the problem? Z Royan was almost exploding in anger. She had to keep telling herself not to get mad. She's been dumb since she was a child. Don't take her seriously. At this moment, Bai Qing also spoke. Don't be too impulsive. Why not wait until I contact the United Alliance of a Hundred Tribes and plan after the reinforcements arrive? Long Chiu Dao, who was beside them, muttered something about getting stronger with each fight. Suddenly, he seemed to recall something. I guess I know why the Holy Demon Clan grows stronger as they fight and never runs out of demonic energy. It should be the earthly sovereign technique, one of the Emperor's unique skills, using the land as a base. They amplify themselves. According to what you said, the Holy Demon Emperor likely uses the entire Holy Demon Realm as the base. In that case, the demonic energy of the Holy Demon Clan will naturally be inexhaustible. Moreover, the Holy Demon Emperor has tied himself to the Primordial Demon Kingdom using the Earthly Sovereign Technique. The stronger the Primordial Demon Kingdom becomes, the stronger the Holy Demon Clan will be, naturally growing stronger as they fight. After this detailed analysis, everyone was stunned. Z Royan was the first to inquire. Is the Earthly Sovereign Technique really that amazing? Surely, it must come at some cost. The Primordial Demon Kingdom and the Holy Demon Emperor are already tied together. They rise and fall together. Of course, the chance of the Primordial Demon Kingdom being destroyed is minimal. After all, with this incredible guy around, the Holy Demon Realm will only become stronger and stronger. Z Royan finally understood, so that's how it is. But the Holy Demon Emperor really has guts. Leaving the Primordial Demon Kingdom to you, if I weren't around, the war at Meteor Flame Battlefield would probably still be ongoing, and this Elder's Realm would have fallen to the first stage. Luo Feng Yuan slammed the table and stood up. You're talking nonsense. Z Royan didn't hold back. You know whether I'm speaking the truth or not. With your beheading style of governance, it's a wonder the Primordial Demon Kingdom is still intact. And could you please take your studies seriously? Now, the memorials that I have to go through actually include affairs of your Primordial Demon Kingdom. Are you trying to work me to death? Facing Z Royan's tirade, Luo Feng Yuan was baffled. Did I mistakenly allocate things? Z Royan shook her head. It's not just a mistake. It's your subjects in the Primordial Demon Kingdom asking for help from officials of the Great Flame Dynasty, hoping that I would make decisions for them. Luo Feng Yuan was speechless. This isn't my fault. I didn't even know they were doing this behind my back to save themselves. Besides, we're all family. Helping out shouldn't be a problem. Facing Z Royan's killer look, she thought better of it. Fine, fine. For the sake of my dad's combat power, I'll take the blame. Suddenly, Zhong Yangming spoke up. There's actually one last doubt regarding the National Fate Plundering Plant in the Southern Wilderness Realm. What role does the Primordial Demon Kingdom play in this? Both of them looked at Bai Qing. So, did the Holy Demon Emperor say anything about it? Bai Qing looked around at everyone, her eyes somewhat heavy. Upon being asked, she began to slowly say, The Holy Demon Emperor holds goodwill towards the Emperor lineage of the Southern Wilderness Realm. Zhong Yangming was a bit confused. If it's goodwill, why did Lord Luo initially come to the Southern Wilderness Realm, planning to plunder the national fate to other parties? Bai Qing shook her head. That's impossible. The Holy Demon Clan naturally feels close to the descendants of the true human Emperor lineage. They would only become close friends or even partners. The information left by Uncle Luo should be to help the Great Flame Dynasty consolidate national fate and share the blessings of heaven.
heaven and earth. Why would he allow her to plunder it? As Bai Qing spoke, she continued eating without any interruption. Zi Ruoyan let out a helpless laugh. If I'm not mistaken, given her personality, no matter what the information says, she would interpret it as a license to plunder national fate, right? Luo Feng Yuan was incredibly awkward. Indeed, it seems. I might have misunderstood. Zhong Yangming then asked again, why would Luo Empress definitely be close to Zi Empress? Isn't that a bit presumptuous? Before Bai Qing could speak, Long Chiodao started explaining. A long time ago, there wasn't a holy demon clan among the demon tribes. In the demon tribes, the Luo family's dual horn demons belonged to one of the imperial families. The young emperor of the Luo demon nation married his sister to the human emperor as a second wife. The agreement was that their firstborn son would carry the Luo surname. This is the origin of the supreme holy demon bloodline. So technically, the holy demon clan are also descendants of the human emperor with the same origin. This is why they would naturally be close. Bai Qing added, Uncle Luo once mentioned that he and that esteemed purple emperor of the human descendants are sworn brothers. Hearing this, Xiao Tian coughed uncontrollably. Goodness, so my second father-in-law is sworn brothers with my grandfather-in-law. That makes me sworn brothers with my grandfather-in-law too. Man, my second father-in-law sure knows how to befriend people from all walks of life. At this moment, the stunned Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan spoke simultaneously. My father and her father are sworn brothers? Since when? Bai Qing thought while biting her chopsticks. The old celestial master who once supervised the national fate of the Great Flame Dynasty was actually Uncle Luo. Zhong Yangming suddenly recalled, so it was him. He disappeared when the Celestial Observatory was disbanded three years after the founding of the nation. Did he go back to the primordial demon kingdom? Did the former emperor already know the truth about the Southern Wilderness Realm? After Uncle Luo discovered the Southern Wilderness Realm's plan to plunder fate, he suggested turning the tables, using resources and efforts from the Eastern Flame Kingdom and Astral Pavilion to help esteemed Purple Emperor grow. Once the national fate was successfully consolidated, Eastern Flame Kingdom and Astral Pavilion would naturally be suppressed by the true human imperial bloodline. At that time, it would make sense to relocate the Great Flame Dynasty to their territories. Zhong Yangming shook his head helplessly. Unfortunately, plans can't keep up with changes. If it wasn't for Prince Zhao's last-minute intervention, Empress Zi and Empress Luo would probably already be dead. Even the citizens of the Great Flame Dynasty, Eastern Flame Kingdom, and Astral Pavilion would have been turned into pills and consumed. Hearing this, Bai Qing was slightly startled. What do you mean? Once the national fate was consolidated, Eastern Flame Kingdom and Astral Pavilion planned to use the Furnace of War to refine the people of the Great Flame Dynasty, Eastern Flame Kingdom, and Astral Pavilion into medicine, with Empress Zi and Empress Luo serving as catalysts. Bai Qing found it hard to believe. How is that possible? Uncle Luo had sent a group of demons to the Southern Wilderness Realm for secret protection four years ago, including the Crown Prince and the Second Prince of the Great Flame Dynasty. Xiao Tian suddenly interjected, It's Zi Xinlian. The backup plan of the Holy Demon Emperor was probably dealt with by her. Hearing this, Luo Feng Yuan excitedly slapped Zi Ruoyan's tailbone. No wonder when I sneaked into the Southern Wilderness Realm, she easily detected me. She already knew my father had a backup plan, and suspected I would come. She was planning to catch us all in one net. This woman, her mind is so sinister. Zi Ruoyan immediately delivered a chop to Luo Feng Yuan's forehead. Why are you slapping me? If you have to slap someone, slap your own leg. Luo Feng Yuan felt secretly pleased inside. He he he. It's a pity the one hitting me isn't Brother Xiao. But Zi Bun will do. I'm not picky. He he he. Zhong Yang Ming continued to inquire if the former emperor already knew the truth. Why did he initially turn hostile and force the hidden empress dowager Shua Ruyan to intervene, which in turn alerted the Shua family, leading them to forcibly cross space to kidnap people? Bai Qing, while chewing her food, responded, I don't know about that, but I've heard Uncle Luo complain that his sworn brother is generally a good guy, except he likes to drink, and has to fight to calm down after he's drunk. The behavior of the two empresses after drinking must have been inherited, though I don't remember Uncle Luo enjoying drunk fights either. Birds of a feather flock together, so it probably doesn't make a difference. At this point, Luo Feng Yuan suddenly laughed. Enough. Let's not think too much about it. Let's discuss all issues after we're full and satisfied. But the next second, Luo Feng Yuan was dumbfounded. Where did all the food that Zhong Yangming made go? More than 20 kinds of snacks. How could they just disappear? Seeing Bai Qing still chewing, Luo Feng Yuan directly grabbed her by the neck. Damn it. Spit it out. Bai Qing asked in astonishment. Didn't you all eat just now? Luo Feng Yuan was furious. We were discussing serious matters. How could we have eaten? But on the meteor flame battlefield. We have to eat quickly, to be prepared for enemies who might attack at any moment. Besides, multitasking by eating and talking shouldn't be a big deal. Hearing this, Luo Feng Yuan suddenly froze, her body becoming rigid and her hand movement stopping. She let go of her grip and looked blankly at the frail girl in front of her. Yes, it's them who have been on the front lines of a war we knew nothing about, defending against enemies and protecting our rear. Thinking of this, Luo Feng Yuan turned her head away. Fine, missing one meal won't make a difference. Next, by 
Qing looked at Zhong Yangming. Thank you for the meal. It tasted great. Zhong Yangming paused and quickly shook his head. The ones who really deserve to be thanked are you guys. You've been defending against enemies and ensuring our rear is safe without us even knowing. Thinking about it now, under your protection, people like Eastern Gaoxian and Zhou Jitian are actually causing havoc behind the lines. They truly deserve to be cut into pieces. Z Royan listened to everyone's conversation and felt exasperated. This family would fall apart without me. How did the topic get so off track? She quickly told everyone that what's most important now is to help Bai Qing send a message to the United Alliance of a hundred tribes and call for reinforcements. Bai Qing nodded. Yes, I still need some help from you too. We are too far away from the core area of the United Alliance of a hundred tribes. We need to construct a magical formation base to amplify the spiritual energy fluctuations of the communication jade in order to send the message out. Hearing this, Zhong Yangming and Wang Chiodao simultaneously turned to look at Xiao Tian. No need to send a message for reinforcements. Our Lord Xiao can single-handedly take on an army. Xiao Tian glared at them seriously. If you dare to expose me, I'll kill you. Both looked away awkwardly. At that moment, Zi Ruoyan suddenly asked, Does anyone here know how to construct a magical formation base? The three paused simultaneously and looked at the two empresses, who seemed somewhat helpless. Xiao Tian sighed deeply. Seeing this, Long Chiodao volunteered. The materials needed for the magical formation base are quite common. It's just that the inscription of the formation itself is somewhat difficult. I can give it a try. Only then did Zi Ruoyan breathe a sigh of relief. Then, I'll leave it to Mr. Dragon Mound. Long Chiodao shook his head. It's no big deal. Just a simple task. Saying this, he looked at Xiao Tian again. Lord, are you really not going to take action? Xiao Tian got angry, clenched his fists, and became excited. I must mooch off others to the very end. Their whispered conversation was unheard by others, but Zi Ruoyan looked at their changing expressions and was puzzled. What are these two doing? Forget it, Mr. Dragon Mound. What materials are needed for constructing the base? I will order someone to prepare them. Long Chiodao sighed and gave a slight bow to Zi Ruoyan. Then I'll have to trouble your highness Z. After finishing discussions last night, at this moment inside the prince's mansion, Long Chiodao had completed the construction of the magical formation base. Bai Qing stood beside him, starting to contact the battlefield leader. A dragon spirit slowly emerged behind her. Bai Qing gently pushed the dragon spirit forward. Instantly, countless forces flooded in. The magical formation base buzzed. A phantom appeared, and the two sides were successfully connected. Bai Qing looked at Long Chiodao beside her. You're amazing. You succeeded on the first try. At this moment, a gentle voice came from the other side of the formation. Is this little Bai Qing? Bai Qing quickly responded, Leader Su, can you hear me clearly? Very clear. What happened? You're actually contacting me in this manner. Luo Feng Yuan listened to the voice from the other end, muttering somewhat dreamily, this leader sounds like a really nice woman. Zi Ruoyan glanced at her. You could tell just by her voice? Luo Feng Yuan shrugged, but don't you think it sounds really gentle? At this moment, Leader Su's voice continued, is the patrol envoy on your side making things difficult for you? Did they mistreat you? It's unfortunate that I can't be with you, but you can send those who trouble you to the blood void. That way, they can die in battle with honor. It's not just for your sake, since they have the leisure to make life difficult for you. Let's send them to a more intense battlefield, so they can display their abilities. Hearing this, everyone present fell into silence, as the most ruthless words were spoken in the gentlest voice. Luo Feng Yuan even hid behind Xiao Tian. I take back what I said earlier. This woman seems a bit scary. Speaking such cold words in a gentle voice is really frightening. Zi Ruoyan also refused to be outdone, clasping Xiao Tian's arm as a woman. Woman. She holds the position of the leader of the United Alliance of a hundred tribes. How could she be a simple and kind person? Bai Qing continued to report, three months ago, the envoy Lu who was in charge of supplies in the Meteor Flame battlefield purposely withheld resources. Holy Demon Emperor Luo Taotian was not convinced, and the two had a bet on who could kill more enemies. Unfortunately, envoy Lu fell into an ambush and died, and the supplies in his storage ring were seized by the enemy. We need the Lu family to compensate for these resources. So, that's what happened. It looks like we'll have to demand an explanation explanation from the Lu family. It's a pity about Envoy Lu, who sacrificed his life on the Meteor Flame battlefield, listening to the two's conversation. Zi Ruoyan looked helplessly at Luo Feng Yuan. Seems like your father isn't exactly a saint either. Luo Feng Yuan proudly said, of course. At this moment, Bai Qing seemed to remember something. Right, the main content of this message is about the need for reinforcements at the Meteor Flame battlefield. Soldiers from the Blood Demon Clan and Blood Grudge Clan, through some means, have flooded into the Meteor Flame battlefield in large numbers. Our four Forces are clearly outnumbered. Leader Su's gentle voice sounded. Forcing their way through the void barrier requires a huge cost. I didn't expect that the other side would be willing. Things are becoming increasingly severe. Little Bai Qing, the reinforcements may be a bit unruly. You should be clear about that. Bai Qing nodded. Don't worry. I am not alone here. Sister Z and Sister Luo are good people. With their help, we can get things done. Upon hearing this, Leader Su's voice suddenly became melancholy. No wonder you used to call me Sister Su, but now you call me Leader Su. It seems you've found new sisters. Bai 
Ching felt a bit guilty, quickly disconnecting the communication array and looking somewhat awkwardly at everyone. Next, all we have to do is wait for reinforcements and then head to the Meteor Flame battlefield. In the meantime, we need to stay vigilant to prevent any surprises. Z Royan and Luo Fongyuan flushed slightly, nodding very cooperatively, for once not teasing her. Suddenly, Luo Fongyuan clenched her fists. I'm really looking forward to seeing my parents and my brothers and sisters. I can understand that feeling. Her expression suddenly turned fierce. At that time, I will personally beat every single one of them up. How dare they deceive me like that? The nerve. Z Royan sighed. All right, that's a feeling I can't understand. At this moment, in the dark void, a warship was speeding along. On board were Z Royan's father, esteemed Purple Emperor, and her mother, Shuaruyan. In addition, there was another couple who resembled Shuaruyan. These two were Shuaruyan's father, Shua Fugue, and her mother, Lu Gui Xiang. Lu Gui Xiang chided discontentedly. All right, stop sulking. What's so great about staying there? I've been fed up with your Shua family's old patriarch for a long time. Esteemed Purple Emperor also comforted his in-laws. Mother-in-law is right. I think we've escaped a life of suffering. We should be happy. Shua Fugue rubbed his head. For our family to leave intact. Of course, that's a good thing. It's just the business we left behind in the Ring Mountain realm. Before Shua Fugue could finish, Lu Gui Xiang interrupted. What's there to miss about things you can't take with you when you're born or when you die? Haven't you already moved a lot of things? Saying this, Lu Gui Xiang hugged her husband. If it weren't for saving you and damaging my foundation, I would have reached the 20th stage long ago. Running away from the Shua family would have been a matter of minutes. Shua Fugue looked worried. Lu Gui Xiang, I'm just concerned that the old colleagues who followed us for their livelihoods will have a hard time. I'm wondering if we took too much when we left. Lu Gui Xiang looked at the pile of rings on her hand. That was yours to begin with. What's this about taking too much? What's the point of leaving anything for that bunch of layabouts? Shua Fugui said. Lu Gui Xiang, I'm not sure if we'll be able to make a comeback in the future. Lu Gui Xiang patted her husband's head. In my heart, you've always been the best and the most capable. Believe in yourself. You can definitely do it. And you have me by your side. The two shared a loving gaze. All was understood without words. Shua Ruyin, watching her parents' affectionate behavior, told esteemed Purple Emperor, my parents have always been very loving. You'll get used to it. Esteemed Purple Emperor smiled. Speaking of which, we were fortunate. I initially wanted to discuss with my in-laws on how to escape from the Shua family. Unexpectedly, the Shua family suffered heavy losses. The tracking contracts on you and your father suddenly disappeared. So now we can go look for Ziroyan. I wonder what happened to the Shua family. Shua Ruyin grumbled. Let those people in the Shua family worry about it. Right now, I just want to get back to the southern wilderness realm as fast as possible and find our daughter. And also to find out how my two sons actually died. If it wasn't for your grandfather, who wanted my emperor's bloodline, and had the patriarch forcibly bring us back from the southern wilderness realm, we wouldn't have missed out on so much time with our children. But mainly, I'm worried that Ziroyan might have been captured. Remember when you used the sacred spirit fox to divine Ziroyan's situation? That sacred spirit fox was annihilated. Shuaruyan scorned, as if I forced the sacred spirit fox. It was the one who felt resistance while divining, and due to its arrogance, forced the issue and was eradicated. Yes, that's what I'm worried about. I'm afraid Z Ruoyan's constitution has been discovered, and she's been taken by some powerful being. Shua Ruyan patted her chest. That won't happen. Z Ruoyan's luck can't be that bad. Shua Fugue also comforted with a smile. Our sweet granddaughter will be just fine. You two don't worry too much. Good son-in-law, didn't you say you have a sworn brother who belongs to the Holy Demon Clan? Won't he take care of our granddaughter? My dear daughter, you also said that you asked Z Xinlian to go over and help take care of things. Let's just see how the situation goes. Don't worry too much. Thinking of Z Xinlian, Shua Ruyan also felt relieved and hummed in anticipation. Half a month later, the battleship finally arrived at the Southern Wilderness Realm. But when she saw the state of the Southern Wilderness Realm, Shua Ruyin was instantly stunned. What the hell? What happened here? The other three quickly surrounded her. A steamed Purple Emperor supported his wife. The scene before them showed an even more broken and devastated realm. Lu Guixiang wore a serious face. Looks like the topics you were discussing on the battleship were accurate. A very powerful being took away our granddaughter, and even took away your empire along with it. Shua Fugui took a deep breath. If it wasn't for you, Shua Ruyin, using your spiritual power to trigger the tracking contract within you, how could the patriarch of the Shua family discover your whereabouts? But then again, with his level of strength, he couldn't even take away the entire southern wilderness realm. Now, whoever took our granddaughter must be unimaginably powerful. For a moment, all four of them fell into an airy silence. After a while, a steamed purple emperor suddenly spoke. Let's go down and take a look. The battleship entered the southern wilderness realm and slowly hovered over this devastated world. Suddenly, a steamed purple emperor seemed to see something. His mood lifted instantly. What is that? Soon, the battleship, under a steamed purple emperor's control, accelerated dramatically, rushing forward. Before long, the battleship stopped in midair, and the four slowly landed on this land. Before them were bodies strewn about haphazardly. A steamed purple emperor instantly recognized them as people of the barbarian kingdom.
kingdom. Shwarian also recognized them. Aren't these people from the Barbarian Kingdom, captured from the Eastern Flame Kingdom to speed up the growth of the Great Flame Dynasty? Esteemed Purple Emperor sighed. Exactly. Look over there. The man was Jia Su, an old acquaintance of Esteemed Purple Emperor. At the moment, he was staring at the sky, his heart pierced by an icicle coagulated from fresh blood. Shwarian found it strange, because this method was exactly the same as the one used to ambush Esteemed Purple Emperor back in the Southern Wilderness Realm. Esteemed Purple Emperor looked solemn as he examined the scene. Indeed, the attacker not only injured the victim, but also drained their soul force. This Jia Su was probably drained of his soul while he was still alive. As he spoke, esteemed Purple Emperor reached out and closed Jia Su's eyes. Lu Guixiang also came over and asked, Is the perpetrator the same mysterious powerful individual you encountered before? Shuarian turned around to explain, Yes. Originally, his sworn brother, the Holy Demon Emperor, had helped us cultivate some powerful subordinates, but these people were assassinated overnight. Their souls drained. While we were investigating, we encountered that strong individual who had attacked people from the Eastern Flame Kingdom and the Astral Pavilion. We joined the battle, but the opponent's techniques are strange. If you get injured, even your soul will be drained. Shuarian looked scared. If it weren't for the Shua family patriarch intervening from a distance, pulling both us and that enemy away, we would all probably be dead. However, the enemy struggled so violently on the way that he fell out of the spatial channel. I fear he has returned. Shua Fugue thought for a moment. Can you still identify him? Did you notice anything special about the enemy? Esteemed Purple Emperor recalled. I didn't get a good look at his face, but I could see that under his hood, he had horns on his head, and they were golden. Meanwhile, on the other side, recently idle while waiting for reinforcements, Z Royan spent every day diligently reviewing memorandums. Luo Feng Yuan was behind her, studying hard. Suddenly, Z Royan clenched her fists, frustrated and shouting Luo Feng Yuan's name. Luo Feng Yuan was startled. What's the matter? Z Royan directly smacked her on the forehead, angrily shouting, When will I not have to review your primordial demon kingdom's memorandums for you? Can't you learn from Bai Qing and take your own affairs seriously? Beside Bai Qing were two piles of memorandums as tall as half a person. She was quickly going through them, reviewing one after another at an incredible speed. Luo Feng Yuan was stunned. That's amazing. She's even faster than Z Bun at reviewing memorandums. Just then, a report came from outside. Empress, a group has arrived outside the prince's palace, claiming to be reinforcements sent by his majesty of Dragon Mound. But something seems off about these people. Xiao Tian, who was sleeping on the side, heard this and got up, stretching. Could it be that these people want to cause trouble? No, prince. It's not like that. They just look more like refugees than soldiers. Upon hearing this, Bai Qing exploded with anger, lightning flashing around her. This is outrageous. The people responsible for sending reinforcements have grown bold, daring to defy leader Su's orders, and sending refugees as reinforcements to deceive me. Bai Qing clenched her fists, lightning swirling around her, and stormed out. Luo Feng Yuan quickly asked Zi Ruoyan, shall we go take a look as well? Zi Ruoyan thought for a moment, of course, we are supposed to go to the meteor flame battlefield with these reinforcements. If problems arise before we even set out, whether you'll get to see your family becomes questionable. Immediately, the two held hands and prepared to go outside. Luo Feng Yuan didn't forget to turn back and smile at Xiao Tian. Brother Xiao, you should come along. Meanwhile, outside the city, several flying boats were currently landed, and among those so-called reinforcements, aside from a few dwarven soldiers, the rest were all elderly, women, and children. So frail it seemed they would crumble in the wind. Xiao Tian looked at the scene, thinking to himself, what the hell, are these the sick and elderly here to serve as reinforcements or to offer themselves up? He then looked over at a lavishly dressed individual, who appeared to be the leader of this group. This man was none other than the one guarding the second line, mysterious wealth mountain range, Jia Benfu. He frowned and started shouting, what's the hold up? I brought the people you rushed me for, and now you're dragging your feet? This is disgusting. A moment later, seeing that Bai Qing had finally arrived, Jia Benfu complained again, the dragon mount commander of the meteor flame battlefield. You've taken quite some time, haven't you? Never mind, I've brought the reinforcements you requested, so I should head back now. As Jia Benfu turned to leave, the next second, a bolt of lightning suddenly struck towards him. Hold on a minute. Bai Qing pointed to the sky with one hand, her face full of rage. Usually delays and lack of supplies are tolerable, but to be so careless with this batch of reinforcements, this is going too far. With that, one bolt of lightning after another struck Jia Benfu, making him jump and shudder. He quickly returned to Bai Qing's side. Dragon Mount Commander, what is the meaning of this? Bai Qing, still furious, retorted, these people, with no combat ability, are your idea of support? But Jia Benfu waved his hand and smiled. The troops in front of you are already the best we can muster. Dragon Mount Commander, you can't ask for the impossible. At this, Bai Qing grew angrier. When we were on the front lines, risking our lives to protect you, many perished. And now when we ask for your help, this is how you repay us. Do you think this is fair to those who sacrificed their lives? Jia Benfu seemed not to care at all. It's not like I asked you to go to the front lines and fight. What does your death have to do with us? Besides, it was agreed from the start that we would 
would improve our strengths in the rear, while you deal with the enemies at the front. Why should we care whether you live or die? If you're not satisfied, go complain to the United Alliance of a Hundred Tribes, understand? With that, Jiao Benfu suddenly grinned maliciously. If you think complaining isn't enough, you can take action against me, even kill me. After all, you are Leader Su's childhood friend, and a close confidant. I believe that even if you killed me, the people of the United Alliance of a Hundred Tribes wouldn't lay a finger on you. Bai Qing clenched her fists, telling herself she couldn't act on her impulse. If she struck now, she would lose any moral high ground, and it might also implicate Leader Su. But Luo Feng Yuan, standing nearby, could not bear it any longer. Her hands blazed with purple-red flames. I can't stand this any longer, she said, as she moved forward to teach Jia Benfu a lesson. Fortunately, Zi Ruoyan grabbed her. What are you trying to do? I want to take this scoundrel down a notch, Zi Ruoyan patiently explained. He's deliberately trying to provoke Bai Qing. If you make a move, you'll be playing into his hands. At that, Luo Feng Yuan looked at Jia Benfu. So we're just supposed to stand here and do nothing? Zi Ruoyan patted her shoulder. We have to trust Bai Qing. If she's holding back now, that means the situation isn't as straightforward as it seems. Otherwise, she would have acted by now. Reluctantly, Luo Feng Yuan, despite her annoyance, dissipated the flames from her hand. Bai Qing continued, You parasites are just trying to use me to manipulate Leader Su. Quite the scheme you have there. Jia Benfu shamelessly grinned. Thank you for the compliment. Now, I entrust the Meteor Flame Battlefield and its reinforcements to the Dragon Mount Commander. I believe you won't disappoint us. With that, Jiao Benfu leapt up, heading toward the flying boat in the sky, leaving behind a hearty laughter. Luo Feng Yuan finally turned to Bai Qing. Why didn't you strike back? Do we just allow ourselves to be bullied? Sending these people to the battlefield is practically sending them to their deaths. Bai Qing looked at the sky and sighed. The divisions within the United Alliance of a Hundred Tribes are just too deep. This mysterious wealth mountain range has the backing of the elders in the Alliance. They're intentionally turning covert schemes into overt acts and delaying things without cooperating. We are helpless against them. Luo Feng Yuan still couldn't understand. Then why not just report them? It's not that simple, Bai Qing replied. Leader Su values rules. To accuse the Jia family, we would need evidence and an investigation, which would be too time-consuming. The meteor flame battlefield can't wait. Zi Ruoyan took over. If they delay and cause your defeat, they could then exploit that to gain merits. You and Leader Su would bear the blame for the loss. And if you had struck earlier, they would probably accuse you of fratricide within the alliance, implicating Leader Su as well. Exactly, Bai Qing said, her voice tinged with helplessness. Luo Feng Yuan was so frustrated she felt like her head would explode. So what do we do now? It's a deadlock. Zi Ruoyan's eyes narrowed. The only way to break the deadlock is to ensure that the meteor flame battlefield doesn't fall. We have to buy time until Leader Su can take them down according to the rules. Suddenly, Xiao Tian's voice rang out. This is infuriating. That Jia Benfu is so malicious, finding ways to harm me. The guards next to him were confused. What's going on? Who is harming whom? Did we miss something? Why can't we keep up with the situation? Xiao Tian directly told the two. No, I have to take Long Chiodao and investigate. I need to see if Jia Benfu has set traps for us on the Meteor Flame Battlefield. You guys wait for me here. Saying this, he gently pinched Zi Ruoyan's cheek, his eyes filled with warmth. He immediately took Long Chiodao and dashed into the cosmos. Puppy informed Xiao Tian, respected master, this is the navigation through the void. The red tab represents locked on space shuttles. A friendly reminder, to avoid tearing the fabric of space, please do not exceed the speed limit. Xiao Tian softly acknowledged with a hum, placing one hand on Long Chiodao. Chiodao's shoulder. In the next second, the two were like a streak of aurora, breaking through the boundary barrier and chasing after Jia Benfu's shuttle. Meanwhile, Jia Benfu was taking a bath with a maid, enjoying a delightful leisure time. Suddenly, a voice called out, Young master, there's a situation. Jia Benfu had no choice but to put on his clothes and go to the shuttle's control room. What's the situation? Something is rapidly approaching us. Even if we change our course, it's still following us, a subordinate informed him. Jia Benfu was taken aback. What is it? Do we have any results from the scout? array? We don't know. If it wasn't for their high speed creating significant disturbances in the chaotic flows of the void, our scouting array wouldn't even have noticed something was approaching, the subordinate replied. Just as he finished speaking, the shuttle experienced severe shaking. Both men rushed to the deck, only to find someone there. The newcomers were Long Chiodao and Xiao Tian, both staring emotionlessly at Jia Benfu. Jia Benfu froze. If I remember correctly, this guy is that gigolo, right? At that moment, Xiao Tian suddenly spoke with a smile, running so fast. You must have a guilty conscience. Jia Benfu was puzzled. Guilty of what? And who says I'm running fast? But come to think of it, how does he know the shuttle is here? Is it a tracking array? Wait, isn't he just a gigolo? How could he possibly know about arrays? Could it be that his gigolo identity is just a smoke screen, and he's actually here to secretly protect Bai Qing from headquarters? As Jia Benfu was rapidly contemplating these questions, he suddenly widened his eyes. Before he knew it, Xiao Tian was already standing in front of him. Jia Benfu was so startled that he stepped back several paces, thinking, what the heck? With my 16 16th stage power, he managed
managed to approach me silently. He must be incredibly skilled. Xiao Tian, as if discovering some secret, spoke coldly. You're thinking. Jia Benfu was stunned. Is it a crime to think? Hearing this, Xiao Tian turned to Long Chodao and said, See, he's scheming, and he's doing it so blatantly. Long Chodao was speechless. Yeah, yeah, whatever you say. Seeing this, Xiao Tian finally began to confront Jia Benfu. Don't blame me for not giving you a chance. Confess now. Xiao Tian even chuckled after saying this. I really am a little genius who understands people well. Jia Benfu was completely confused. What is this guy talking about? What do I have to confess? However, he thought, he just barges into my shuttle so recklessly, he must have a death wish. Clenching his fist, he yelled, hasn't anyone told you not to casually enter another person's palace type spiritual tool? Then, Jia Benfu suddenly kneeled on one knee, and pressed his palm onto the deck. An array appeared. As the array started to operate, a surge of power flowed into Jia Benfu's body. Let's see who's more powerful, you or my upgraded 18th stage self. By the time he stood up again, his aura had indeed reached the 18th stage. Without hesitating, a purple flame appeared in his hand, heading straight for Xiao Tian. Take this. At this moment, facing Jiao Benfu who had just leveled up twice in the continuously surging power on the shuttle, Xiao Tian turned his head and asked Long Chiu Dao, why are you trembling? Long Chiu Dao looked somewhat helpless. Sir Xiao, palace-type spiritual tools generally have arrays that can amplify the owner's power. With the power of the array, Jiao Benfu can now suppress me. After all, I'm just a dragon spirit without the power of flesh and blood to support me. A little trembling is normal. Upon hearing this, Xiao Tian turned his attention back to the imposing Jia Benfu, who was slowly pulling out a long sword amidst flashing electricity. Blood Shadow Thunderblade power doubled. Jia Benfu declared confidently, charging forward. This time, I'll finish you off in one strike. Xiao Tian stood still, allowing the sword to swipe across his neck. With a clang, purple thunderlight burst forth as if reaping lives, like a strange god of death. Jia Benfu sheathed his sword, and smugly said, in your next life, don't overestimate yourself, and recklessly intrude into someone else's palace-like spiritual tool. However, just then, Jia Benfu's sword suddenly shattered with a crack, scattering all over the floor. Jia Benfu was instantly baffled. What the heck? Where's my sword? Where's my long, handsome sword that was flashing with thunder? Turning his head, Jia Benfu saw Xiao Tian completely unscathed. His neck was flawless, showing no signs of injury. Jia Benfu was stunned. Why? I clearly hit him. At this moment, Long Chiu Dao suddenly sighed. This kid is about to lose hope. Xiao Tian looked unhappy. Did you see that? He tried to kill me right away. Clearly, he has malicious intent. Long Chiu Dao nodded. Exactly. These people are truly malicious. Upon hearing this, Jia Benfu was completely disheartened and collapsed weakly onto the ground. My most powerful move was so useless. Bai Qing, are you out of your mind? Why would you even need support when you have such a monster beside you? Xiao Tian walked up to Jia Benfu and looked down at him condescendingly. Your true colors are exposed. You can't deny it now, can you? Jia Benfu looked bitter. What should I even say? Xiao Tian didn't waste any more words, clenched his fist and said, some people just need a good smack. With a slap, Xiao Tian sent Jia Benfu flying, who landed with a thud not far away. Pointing at him, Xiao Tian turned to Long Chiu Dao. Can you believe this guy? He even dared to ask me questions. Indeed, he actually had the nerve to question. Long Chiu Dao agreed. Xiao Tian walked up to Jia Benfu again. It seems like you don't even realize the situation you're in. Speak. Jia Benfu had had enough and yelled. What do you want me to say? This infuriated Xiao Tian. How shameless you are. I, the victim, haven't even lost my temper, yet you dare to get angry? With that, Xiao Tian started pummeling Jia Benfu, leaving him questioning his life choices and ultimately falling weakly to the ground, his soul soaring in agony. Better fess up now. Honesty will get you leniency. Resistance will make it worse. The sooner you talk, the sooner you'll be free, Xiao Tian warned. Holding his swollen face, Jia Benfu looked wronged. Well then, ask me, what do you want to know? Xiao Tian raised his hand as if to strike again. Jia Benfu flinched and hastily began to speak. Big brother, behind me is Elder Zhang from the United Alliance of a Hundred Tribes. Xiao Tian paused, and then, seeing this, Jia Benfu was slightly taken aback, but quickly tried to appear obedient. Is he asking about the power behind the Jia family? Right, he's on good terms with Bai Qing. He probably wants to know why the Jia family is causing trouble for Bai Qing. If he'd asked sooner, I would have told him. Did I really have to be beaten so many times? With these thoughts, Jia Benfu continued, Elder Zhang has been unhappy with Leader Su for many years, so he had us sabotage the front lines in the war. All the plans were provided by him. Our Jia family was just following his orders. As soon as he finished speaking, Xiao Tian suddenly slapped Jia Benfu again. Jia Benfu was dumbfounded, but Xiao Tian looked disdainful. You got it wrong. Keep thinking. Jia Benfu thought for a moment and pulled a scroll of a map from his pocket. Here is the defensive line map of the mysterious Wealth Mountain range. Please take a look. Xiao Tian glanced at the map briefly. In the next second, he smacked Jia Benfu on the forehead with the scroll. What's wrong with your brain? What use do I have for this? Keep thinking. Jia Benfu was on the verge of breaking down, frantically bowing his head. Please calm down. Let me think again. Long Chiu Dao coldly watched this unfold.
world. Why bother? You were showing off in the holy demon domain, and now look what's happened. Moments later, Long Chiu Dao suddenly reminded Xiao Tian, Sir, we are approaching the mysterious wealth mountain range. Outside the flying boat, a massive range of mountains stood, surrounded by countless smaller lands, all shimmering with the light of magical arrays. Long Chiu Dao looked out the window. The base of the defense formation is made up of world fragments, surrounded by island-shaped war fortresses. This kind of dual-layer defensive line is brilliantly arranged. But unfortunately, Xiao Tian snorted and cut him off. Unfortunately, all these resources are just sitting here, while the actual front lines can't benefit from them. Pointing at Jia Benfu, he added, Your Jia family really is shameless to the core. The soldiers on the front lines are sacrificed for nothing. The next second, Jia Benfu suddenly slapped himself. You're right, it's utterly shameless. Xiao Tian suddenly felt a chill and was taken aback, drawing in a breath of cold air. No wonder you know nothing. Your brain isn't functioning. Have you ever seen someone who slaps themselves? Long Chiu Dao leaned in. This is the first time I've seen something like this. It's really eye-opening. Jia Benfu, however, was undeterred and kept slapping himself, unable to stop. Internally, he was secretly delighted. I'm so clever. As long as I slap myself faster, he won't have a chance to do it. Ha ha ha. He finally seemed to lose his sanity and knelt on the ground, laughing maniacally at the sky. Xiao Tian was confused. What's going on here? Long Chiu Dao looked awkward. Did you break him? Xiao Tian quickly waved his hand. Impossible. Absolutely impossible. Looking at the still giggling Jia Benfu, Long Chiu Dao sighed. What a pity. How can we use him if he's gone insane? He then leaned close to Xiao Tian's ear. Sir Xiao, what should we do next? Xiao Tian also glanced at the idiotic Jia Benfu. Don't worry, we can still make use of him, but his expression is really disgusting. Describing him as a dog would be an insult to dogs. Let's enter the mysterious Wealth Mountain Range and covertly investigate this so-called mountain range and the Jia family. Maybe we'll make some new discoveries. What do you think? After speaking, Xiao Tian smiled confidently, feeling very satisfied with his own wisdom. Long Chiu Dao immediately got the gist. Do you mean, Lord Xiao, are you suggesting that there might be the workings of an enemy martial spirit army, possibly comprised of the Blood Rune Clan and Blood Grudge Clan? Here, Xiao Tian shrugged. Yes, I can't rule out that possibility. After all, if the martial spirit army isn't involved, their internal disputes wouldn't put the front lines at such risk. And if the front lines fall, how can the rear be secured? Upon hearing this, Jia Benfu involuntarily twitched. Long Chiu Dao immediately noticed. It was just a guess earlier, but Jia Benfu showed such a clear micro-expression after hearing the words martial spirit army. He's practically exposing himself. He quickly told Xiao Tian, Sir, the Jia family really has an issue. Xiao Tian looked over and saw that Jia Benfu had returned to his clueless demeanor. Xiao Tian could only continue to analyze. This is all speculation. Jia Benfu's micro-expression lasted only about a second or so, which can't directly prove that the Jia family is up to something. We'll still have to investigate further. Remember, we won't let any enemy slip away, but we also won't wrong any innocent person. Follow my lead. Upon hearing this, Long Chiu Dao looked deeply at Xiao Tian. What's terrifying about Sir Xiao is his logic, and the logic is irrefutable. Then, Long Chiu Dao slowly approached Jiao Benfu and patted him on the shoulder. Young man, take a good look at this mysterious wealth mountain range for the last time. Hearing this, Jiao Benfu looked up, puzzled. What do you mean? Long Chiu Dao sighed. Because soon, your hometown, mysterious wealth mountain range, will become a thing of the past. Just like the previous pioneer battle city, it will only exist in people's memories. Jia Benfu was completely bewildered. What's he talking about? What does become a thing of the past mean? At this moment, under Jia Benfu's guidance, the group had already reached the mysterious wealth mountain range. Looking at the watchtower beyond the world barrier, Xiao Tian curiously asked Long Chiu Dao, What is this? Long Chiu Dao informed Xiao Tian, This is the entrance to the domain world, commonly referred to as a border checkpoint. It's constructed on some weak points of the world barrier and is primarily used to screen and verify the information of people entering and exiting the domain world to prevent those with malicious intentions from getting in. Upon hearing this, Xiao Tian was a bit puzzled. Why doesn't our holy demon domain have such a checkpoint? Long Chiu Dao looked deeply at him. The holy demon domain does have them. It's just that you, sir, treat the world barrier as if it's non-existent. You come and go as you please, never having to pass through any checkpoints. Jiao Benfu, who was standing nearby, widened his eyes upon hearing this. Holy cow, is this even human? Treating world barriers as if they're nothing, coming and going freely? Where did this guy come from? But Xiao Tian shook his head. That's not right. The Blood Rune clan members entered the holy demon domain pretty easily back then. Long Chiu Dao helplessly extended two fingers and explained, that's because, sir, you expanded the holy demon domain a little bit in order to integrate it with the Great Flame Dynasty. After the expansion, there were several weak points, giving the Blood Rune clan an opportunity. Only then did Xiao Tian have an epiphany. He looked around and said, all right, but this mysterious wealth mountain range is quite lively. Long Chiu Dao also observed the passing airships. The mysterious wealth mountain range must be a crucial point on the void routes, hence the number of flying spiritual tools passing
passing through. It's a key defense line, so if the Meteor Flame Battlefield is breached, this will be the new Meteor Flame Battlefield. Xiao Tian was again confused. What do you mean by crucial point? Can't they take a detour? When you start from a distance, isn't everything around empty? Why not just go around? Xiao Benfu couldn't help but laugh. Even a child knows such basic knowledge. How come this incredibly powerful individual doesn't? Long Chiodao seriously explained, Sir Xiao, the turbulent flows in the void can be strong or weak. When strong, they could easily tear apart someone like Jiao Benfu. When weak, even a level 10 individual could easily withstand them. The turbulent flows within the void roots are relatively mild, and can even serve as a boost for flying spiritual tools. Over time, everyone began to use these roots. Additionally, from what I've observed, the intensity of the turbulent flows surrounding the mysterious Wealth Mountain range is terrifying. They could easily shred a level 20 strongman. Upon hearing this, Xiao Tian glanced at Jiao Benfu again. Jiao Benfu quickly nodded, reporting to you, sir, everything this old gentleman has said is absolutely true. Moreover, to the north of the mysterious Wealth Mountain range, there's a void thunder pool filled with devastating void thunders. No one can pass through that death trap. Upon hearing about the void thunders, Xiao Tian suddenly recalled something. Is this thunder black, with a little bit of white light on it? Does it look like a sea where thunders interweave? Jiao Benfu was taken aback, showing some surprise on his face. Yes. Have you seen it? Xiao Tian didn't answer him, but turned to ask Long Chiu Dao. That's odd. When I was rushing from the southern wilderness realm to the holy demon domain, I remember taking you all through this void thunder pool. Does that mean the southern wilderness realm is also part of the mysterious wealth mountain range? Long Chiu Dao continued to explain, You indeed took us through the void thunder pool, sir. The southern wilderness realm is near the mysterious wealth mountain range. Upon hearing this, Jiao Benfu subconsciously swallowed. He couldn't fathom why he had brought such a monstrous individual from Bai Qing's side. I'm a sinner to my family. Father, grandfather, I've failed our ancestors. Xiao Tian, arriving at the mysterious Wealth Mountain range checkpoint on Jiao Benfu's airship, asked Jiao Benfu, do we need to be interrogated when entering the checkpoint? Jiao Benfu grinned confidently, sir, with me here, you both can make up any identity you want. Xiao Tian immediately told him, all right, then I am your adoptive grandfather from now on. You're the obedient grandson. Got it. Without a moment's hesitation, Jiao Benfu knelt on the ground and shouted, it. Grandfather, I understand. But what about this other gentleman? Xiao Tian thought for a moment. He can be your adoptive father. Jia Benfu was stunned, completely at a loss for words. Long Chiu Dao internally shook his head, thinking, Sir Xiao really acts childishly sometimes. At that moment, Xiao Tian took out a pill from his storage ring and handed it to Jia Benfu. Here, eat this, he said. Without questioning, Jia Benfu took the pill and swallowed it without hesitation. Both Xiao Tian and Long Chiu Dao were baffled. Has Jia Benfu gone completely stupid? He doesn't even suspect it might be poison? Just then, a quarrel erupted at the checkpoint. One of the people trying to pass shouted, why is the toll so expensive? The guard retorted, if you find it expensive, you can mortgage your wife and your airship to pass. Upon hearing this, Long Chiu Dao turned to Jiao Benfu, how much is the toll for passing this checkpoint? Jiao Benfu hesitated for a moment, 30%. Long Chiu Dao, finding his answer vague, raised his voice, what do you mean by 30%? Startled, Jiao Benfu quickly explained, the toll is 30% of the wealth the traveler possesses. The magical formations can detect what you have stored and the value of your flying spiritual tools. Of course, powerful people and people with strong backgrounds are exceptions. Jia Benfu said this with a smile, but Long Chiu Dao was visibly angry. This is extortion. They take advantage of the weak. Xiao Tian, however, just chuckled. When your power is sufficiently strong, you naturally do whatever you want, following your heart's desires. Without a scale in your heart, it's easy to go astray. Such things are quite interesting. If you are strong enough, even if you act recklessly or create a mess, even if you fart, others will say, wow, that that smells so good. Seeing Xiao Tian perform so convincingly, Jia Benfu hurriedly flattered. Grandfather, you're absolutely right. But the very next second, Xiao Tian slapped Jia Benfu across the face. Holding his swelling cheek, Jia Benfu trembled but showed no signs of discontent. Grandfather, that was a wonderful slap. It felt so good. Don't worry, I'll have the guard let us through right now. Xiao Tian pointed at him seriously. Not only that, you should also let everyone on that airship go. Absolutely, as you say, Jia Benfu agreed. Seeing this, Xiao Tian tossed another pill at him. Jia Benfu immediately opened his mouth to catch it, looking very much like a sycophant. Then he leapt off the deck and ran toward the checkpoint guards. Long Chiu Dao looked visibly frustrated. When the upper beam is not straight, the lower ones will go aslant. This Jia family really is disgusting. Xiao Tian was more reflective. The problem isn't the Jia family, it's this world. Saying this, he looked into the distance. Anyway, let's not dwell on it. What we should consider now is that the Jia family is using my kindness to their advantage. They set up this whole act to force my hand and make Jia Benfu protect tend to listen to me, just to trap me. This Jia family is really crafty and dangerous. They can't be trusted. Long Chiu Dao listened in silence. Although Master Zhao's thoughts were becoming increasingly biased, the overall point was valid. When they arrived at the mysterious 
Wealth Mountain Range checkpoint and saw the guards giving a traveler a hard time, Xiao Tian had Jia Benfu step and help. Observing the poor state of the traveler, Xiao Tian pondered, if you can't pay the toll, you get beaten. Your spouse might even be taken as a slave to cover the toll. This is disgraceful. Clearly, the mysterious Wealth Mountain Range has rotten to its core. Jia Benfu helped the beaten man up and yelled at those who were oppressing him. What are you still doing here? Get out now! The disheveled guards hurriedly ran out of their airship, leaving behind a group of tearful women. Long Chiodao was fuming. Sir Xiao, you were right. This Jia family must be eradicated. Moments later, Jia Benfu returned to the airship to report to Xiao Tian. Grandfather, the toll for this family has been waived. Those people will no longer be enslaved to cover their toll. Seeing the trembling relatives who had almost been taken away, Xiao Tian waved his hand. Well done. Let's move forward. As he spoke, Xiao Tian clenched his fists. I can't wait to see the might of the Jia family in the mysterious Wealth Mountain Range. Seeing Jia Benfu looking flustered, Xiao Tian patted him on the shoulder. Don't be afraid. I'm a very reasonable person. I hit you earlier as a test to see your worth. As the saying goes, there's a special bond between grandfathers and grandchildren. The person a grandfather dotes on most is his grandchild. Xiao Tian continued speaking while patting Jia Benfu on the face. Jia Benfu was deeply moved. Yes, the person a grandfather dotes on most is his obedient grandson like me. He then registered the information for Xiao Tian and Long Chiodao. This person is my grandfather, and the one next to him is my father. The guard looked at them in bewilderment. Young master, are you joking? Jia Benfu immediately slapped the guard. Do you have the audacity to question who I recognize as my grandfather? If it weren't for him saving my life, I would be dead by now. Furious, Jia Benfu continued. What kind of damn look is that? You know nothing. He then unleashed a flurry of slaps, leaving the guard's face swollen like a pig's head. Once he was done, Jia Benfu massaged his wrist and asked, Have you noted down the information I gave you? Can we proceed now? The guard quickly bowed and nodded. Yes, young master, you may proceed. What are you waiting for? Get it done. The guard immediately dashed to the magical formation at the checkpoint and activated it. The formation lit up, and the guard gestured, Young master, you may now proceed. The enormous airship passed through the formation, and the scenery immediately changed. Xiao Tian stood at the front of the ship, looking at the continent. Why do I feel that the spiritual energy here is not as strong as in the Holy Demon Domain? Long Chiodao stroked his beard and pondered, Sir Xiao, the Holy Demon Domain has become quite special since you've been there. Xiao Tian turned his head curiously. Isn't the mysterious Wealth Mountain Range also special? Long Chiodao hesitated for a second. It's not the same, Sir Xiao. You collected so many world fragments in the void and casually inserted them into the Holy Demon Domain. Not only has the size of the Holy Demon Domain increased, but the fate within those world fragments has been absorbed by the Domain. Therefore, the spiritual energy of the Holy Demon Domain is definitely denser than any other Domain right now. Long Chiodao sighed. Only you could have accomplished something like this. At this moment, Xiao Tian has already entered the mysterious Wealth Mountain Range. The main city below is the epitome of luxury. Jia Benfu points to the largest mansion and laughs. That is the residence of our Jia family's core members. It's the heart of our mysterious Wealth Mountain Range, called Mysterious Wealth Mountain City. Besides this, we have five other major cities in various directions. If you're interested, Grandfather, I can take you to see them. Xiao Tian, closing one eye, is gesturing with one hand, contemplating how he should dismantle this harmful city. Like this? Or like that? Long Chiodao also inquires, Sir Xiao, what shall we do next? Getting somewhat excited, he thinks, this place is the core of the Mysterious Wealth Mountain Range. I'm sure Sir Xiao will make a big move here. So thrilling, but Xiao Tian waves it off. No rush. We must be steady and cautious in our actions. Then he suddenly asks Jiao Benfu, is there a place in Mysterious Wealth Mountain City where we can stay? Jiao Benfu immediately smiles. Of course, grandfather. I have some properties in the city. What kind of place would you like to stay in? A quiet environment with a comfortable bed. Jiao Benfu rubs his hands together. Certainly, grandfather. Just wait a moment and I'll take you there right away. Their airship then majestically flies over the city, catching the attention of the surprised citizens below. Suddenly, Xiao Tian looks curiously in a certain direction. What is that? He sees an elegantly dressed woman leisurely walking down the street. Long Chiodao quickly asks when he sees Xiao Tian's expression change. Sir Xiao, what's wrong? Did you see something? Xiao Tian explains. It's nothing. I just saw a woman who looks a bit like my main wife. Long Chiodao is confused. Main wife? You mean Her Majesty Z? Xiao Tian nods. Yes. Long Chiodao observes. This is the first time I've heard you refer to Her Majesty Z in this manner. Why the different titles in public and private? Xiao Tian gives him a look. You must be single, right? Long Chiodao blankly responds. Yes, I have never been married. Hearing this, Xiao Tian sighs and laughs. No wonder you don't understand. Women, especially one who's an empress, can be a bit sundra. Calling her wife directly would make her shy. Calling her your majesty is just a little romantic quirk between couples. Long Chiodao is utterly confused. How are these things necessarily connected? Xiao Tian can only pat him on the shoulder in consolation. You really are an old bachelor. Long Chiodao is completely bewildered. 
staring at the sighing Xiao Tian who seems to have more to say but doesn't. He wants to argue back, but he can't refute the truth. At this moment, at the peak of mysterious wealth mountain, Xiao Tian stands on a balcony overlooking the city, muttering to himself, this position is really good. Looking closely, the scenery of mysterious wealth mountain range is quite nice. It'd be a pity to cut it down. Xiao Benfu is immediately taken aback. What do you mean cut it down? Are you going to destroy the mysterious wealth mountain range? That's impossible. How could anyone destroy such a vast world? Xiao Tian then turns around and smiles at him. You've handled this matter quite well, and I'm very satisfied. However, this doesn't absolve the Jia family of their sins. Yet, I'm willing to give your family a chance to reform. Jia Benfu immediately starts to nervously rub his hands together, smiling. Yes, yes. Grandfather, you're absolutely right. Our Jia family will definitely cherish this opportunity. Although he's saying this, he has no clue what wrong his family has committed to offend this man. Could it be related to the United Alliance of a Hundred Tribes? But Xiao Tian has never mentioned the United Alliance of a Hundred Tribes from start to finish. Oh well, better not to think too much about it and just ask him directly. So, Jia Benfu bends over and asks with a smile, Grandfather, do you have any further instructions? Xiao Tian glances at him. You should go back to the Jia family first. Tell your family head to come and apologize. Remember, don't try any tricks. You know my strength. Jia Benfu breaks into a cold sweat but quickly regains composure, adopting a submissive and respectful demeanor. Rest assured, Grandfather, I'll convey your wishes exactly. Whatever requirements you have, our Jia family will cooperate fully. Xiao Tian waves his hand. Go on then. Make sure your family head visits tomorrow and don't be late. Hearing this, Jia Benfu turns to leave, casting a lingering glance back at Xiao Tian as if contemplating something. Once he's downstairs, he waves to Xiao Tian. Grandson will return tomorrow. Make sure to get some rest. Xiao Tian, still on the tower, simply gestures for him to leave. How could anyone not love such a cheerful and magnanimous individual like Xiao Tian? Soon after, Jia Benfu exits the building. As the door closes behind him, he pats his chest in relief. He actually survived. I need to report this to my grandfather as soon as possible. Xiao Tian seems to suspect that our Jia family is in cahoots with the Martial Spirit Army. Long Chiodao watches Jia Benfu's departing figure. Sir Xiao, are we just letting him go? Xiao Tian nods. Long Chiodao is instantly puzzled, so the idea of acting cautiously is to let him go and alert his family, so they have ample time to prepare an ambush. I doubt the Jia family head will come to apologize tomorrow. Instead, they'll likely surround us with various experts. The situation might turn into one where they willingly come to us and get wiped out. None will escape, he concludes. Having the enemy willingly deliver themselves to us, Sir Xiao. This is a brilliant plan. Xiao Tian motions him to lower his voice. Keep that admiration to yourself. Don't voice it out loud. I can't be too high profile. All right, let's go check on the family we rescued at the checkpoint earlier. Long Chiodao points to a side building. The family we rescued at the checkpoint has been arranged to stay in the side yard by Xiao Benfu. Xiao Tian looks over. Are you sure that's a side yard and not a garden? All I see are plants and flowers from here. Long Chiodao is equally puzzled. Sir Xiao, shall we go down and have a look? It should be the side yard. All right, let's go check it out, says Xiao Tian. But when he arrives, he is stunned. Turns out, when the people they rescued took off their hats, they each had a flower or plant growing from their heads. No wonder it looked like a garden from above, he thinks. The leader, Hua Kai Tu, looks at Xiao Tian with surprise. Is something wrong, benefactor? Have I offended you in some way? The next second, Xiao Tian bluntly asks, why do you have flowers growing from your heads? Hua Kai Tu touches his head. Oh, you mean this? Haven't you ever seen our flower head tribe before? Xiao Tian shakes his head, confused, and looks at Long Chiodao, who is also puzzled. If even Long Chiodao hasn't seen them, they must be a new race that emerged after Long Chiodao was sealed in the Holy Dragon Relic. But this flower head tribe, they've definitely crossed some racial boundaries. Do they even wash their hair? With this thought in mind, Xiao Tian pulls Hua Kai Tu aside and whispers, I have a question, and I apologize if it's inappropriate, but I'm genuinely curious. Benefactor, you saved our family. Feel free to ask anything. With a serious expression, Xiao Tian asks, Do you wash your hair? Long Chiodao, not expecting such an irrelevant question, is caught off guard and coughs vigorously. That's so like you, Sir Xiao. Always focused on the most trivial yet oddly specific details. Hua Kai Tu starts to explain, Our tribe doesn't need to wash our hair. Our head flowers absorb the spiritual energy from the heavens and earth and convert it into a dew-like spiritual energy. This dew has the power to purify other spiritual energies and is an excellent ingredient for alchemy. Many in our flower head tribe are skilled alchemists and also good at cultivation. Upon hearing this, Xiao Tian's face lights up with excitement. You can purify the spiritual energy of the heavens and earth? That's wonderful. So that's it. Ever since Xiao Tian stuffed various world fragments into the holy demon realm, the spiritual energy there has become more abundant but also more murky. Even using a magical formation couldn't sort it out. But with the arrival of this flower head tribe, could the problem be solved? Xiao Tian eagerly grips Hua Keita's hand. Sir, may I know your name? You may call me Hua Kai Tu, benefactor, he replies. I noticed you had a conflict with the guards at the border. 
border. Was it because you couldn't afford the toll? Didn't you look into the situation before coming here? Asks Xiao Tian. Hua Kedu's brow furrows. Benefactor, you may not be aware, but our homeland, the Hundred Flower Domain, has been struck by calamity. We are refugees. After escaping, we came here to seek help from the United Alliance of a Hundred Tribes. We didn't expect the guards at the second defensive line, the mysterious Wealth Mountain Range, to be so ruthless. They demanded half of our possessions. Half? Xiao Tian is shocked. I thought it was just 30%. Hua Kai Tu grinds his teeth in anger. According to those guards, 30% goes to the toll, and another 20% is shared among them. Hearing this, Xiao Tian and Wang Chiodao exchange a glance. Then, they inquire further. What kind of calamity has befallen your homeland, Hundred Flower Domain, that you had to flee? At these words, Hua Kai Tu seems to recall some horrifying scene and starts to shiver. After a long pause, he finally speaks. In our Hundred Flower Domain, many talented and strong individuals have had their souls drained and died mysteriously. Hearing this, Xiao Tian looks at Long Chiodao. Soul draining? What kind of race would use such a technique? Long Chiodao sighs and shakes his head. I'm not sure. There are too many races capable of such methods. At that moment, Puppy suddenly informs Xiao Tian, Master, based on Hua Keda's description, the calamity that struck the Hundred Flower Domain could be related to soul draining, and soul draining is a talent of the ancient god tribe. However, Xiao Tian couldn't immediately remember who the ancient god tribe were. Puppy materializes its virtual form and starts scanning the legacy data of the ancient god tribe. Soon, an old man appears on the screen. What is this? Xiao Tian asks. Puzzled, Puppy smiles. Master, have you forgotten? This is the spirit of the ancient god tribe's legacy. Hearing Puppy's explanation, Xiao Tian ponders for a moment before suddenly recalling. Ah, you mean the legacy spirit you consumed when we were in my sea of consciousness? What happened to it? Seeing that he remembered, Puppy continues. Master, the calamity that befell the hundred flower domain could very well have been caused by soul draining. And after scanning the data left by the legacy spirit, I found that soul draining is a talent of the ancient god tribe. So, it's very likely that they are the ones responsible. Further data is still being scanned. Hearing this, Xiao Tian mutters to himself, if I can find out who is responsible for draining the souls in the hundred flower domain, then these humanoid air purifiers will only a bid one. It would then make sense to integrate them into the holy demon realm to purify its murky spiritual energy, right? This could work. I'll take care of the hundred flower domain's problems on my way back to the holy demon realm. Thinking this, Xiao Tian breaks into a self-satisfied smile. Both Hua Kai Tu and Wang Chiu Dao, watching Xiao Tian as he zones out, can't help but call out, Sir Xiao, Sir Xiao. Coming back to his senses, Xiao Tian asks, What's up? Long Chiu Dao, eyes wide, queries, Sir Xiao, have you thought of something? At this, Xiao Tian directly tells them, I just remembered that the methods used against the Hundred Flower Domain might very likely be from the ancient god tribe. Hua Kai Tu, clearly having never heard of this race, asks confusedly, What is the ancient god tribe? Long Chiu Dao is also puzzled, I have never heard of this race either. If they really possess such terrifying techniques as you suggest, how come they are not widely known? Could it be that the ancient god tribe is a newly born race? Xiao Tian waves it off. Who cares? We'll find out when we visit the Hundred Flower Domain on our way back. He then reassures Hua Kai Tu, you take your family and rest well. Don't worry about anything. Once we've settled things here, we'll go to the Hundred Flower Domain and solve this problem once and for all. Hua Kai Tu looks terrified. Benefactor, the Hundred Flower Domain is extremely dangerous right now. How can I let you take such a risk? Hearing this, Xiao Tian reaches out with one hand. Don't worry, I'm very powerful. But Hua Kai Tu becomes frantic. Benefactor, you've already saved our family's lives. How could we allow you to risk yours for the sake of our people? Before he could finish speaking, Hua Kai Tu watches as Xiao Tian effortlessly shatters a piece of space with one hand. You, you just casually shattered a high-level dimensional space. Coming to his senses, Hua Kai Tu wraps his arms around Xiao Tian's leg. On behalf of all the people of the Hundred Flower Domain, thank you. Xiao Tian quickly helps him up. No need for this. We're all on the same side now. No need to be so formal. Hua Kai Tu looks at Xiao Tian with a face full of admiration, considering him to be the greatest benefactor in the world. Unbeknownst to them, their entire clan was about to embark on the path of working laboriously. Back home, Jia Benfu immediately goes to his grandfather, Jia Jingjing, to complain, Grandpa, that guy is not human at all. You have no idea the humiliation I have endured. That Xiao guy is just inhuman. He beat me into a pulp on the flying boat, and even forced me to call him Grandpa. Upon hearing this, Jia Jingjing nods approvingly, you did well. He turns around and pats his grandson on the shoulder. A good man knows when to bend and when to stand. It may seem humiliating to others, but to me, it shows courage, the courage to bow, the courage to endure. Jia Benfu, cheered up by the compliment, asks, so what should we do next? Jia Xingjing reveals a scheming smirk. Tomorrow, your grandpa wants me to apologize. So, I will prepare a special gift for him to make it very clear who the 
real grandpa is. Saying this, his face fills with a ruthless expression. Xiao Benfu looks at his grandfather's face and becomes alarmed. Wait, grandpa, you're not planning to use that, are you? Jia Jingjing cuts him off. Exactly, I plan to use the Jade Shatter formation. Upon hearing this, Jia Benfu swallows hard before cautioning. Grandpa, we can't do this. This is the last trump card for our mysterious wealth mountain range. Once activated, it would mean mutual destruction along with the entire realm. Jia Jingjing dismissively scolds. What's all the fuss? This formation has long been altered by me so that it will only sacrifice the creatures native to the mysterious wealth mountain city, leaving our Jia family uninvolved. Once I activate the formation and bring down that Xiao individual, we will have performed a great service. Jia Jingjing can't help but laugh. By then, whether it's in the Elders Council of the Alliance or the Martial Spirit Army, both will owe us a debt of gratitude. Isn't it a win-win situation? Growing more animated, Jia Jingjing clenches his fist as if Xiao Tian's fate is already sealed. Jia Benfu bends at the waist in a formal bow. Grandpa, you're brilliant, but this person is incredibly powerful. Will the Jade Shatter formation really work? Upon hearing this, Jia Jingjing chuckles lightly and turns. Come with me, grandson. There are some family secrets you should know. Soon, they arrive at a secret location. Seeing the bound person, Jia Benfu is shocked and can't help but ask. Grandpa, what is this? With a mad glint in his eyes, Jia Jingjing explains. This guy is a descendant of the human emperor and has awakened the authentic imperial bloodline of humanity. His bloodline, once extracted, would be incredibly extraordinary, wouldn't it? Jia Benfu is startled by his grandfather's words. You can actually extract the true imperial bloodline of humanity? Jia Jingjing calmly responds. Of course, the method was provided by the Martial Spirit Army. I'm not entirely sure of its efficacy, but the Jade Shatter formation will be ignited using his blood as the core, coupled with the lives of a billion citizens from Mysterious Wealth City. Eliminating that arrogant Xiao Tian will be a piece of cake. It will take just one night to activate the formation. Tomorrow will be that arrogant Xiao Tian's day of reckoning. Jia Jingjing sneers, as if the death of a billion lives is nothing more than a cold statistic. Carried along by the mood, Jia Benfu also starts to look forward with anticipation, thinking, Grandpa, you're definitely done for this time. In the evening, Xiao Tian takes out a ghost mask and hands it to Long Chiu Dao to put on. Confused, Long Chiu Dao asks, Lord Xiao, what are we doing? Have you never heard the saying? The night is dark, and the wind is high, a perfect time for a lesson, Xiao Tian replies, putting on his ghost mask and looking towards the palace above. We're going to the Jia family to teach them a lesson. Long Chiu Dao hesitates, but Lord Xiao, didn't you say they should come to see you tomorrow? What does that have to do with me going to see them now? Xiao Tian retorts. Long Chiu Dao is left speechless. Lord Xiao, you really are cunning, always full of surprises. Before leaving, Xiao Tian instructs, wait, don't act rashly, follow my commands closely, stay by my side to avoid any unexpected situations. Facing Xiao Tian, Long Chiu Dao nods lightly after putting on the mask, understood, Lord Xiao. After donning the mask, Xiao Tian slowly rises into the night sky at a moderate pace. Long Chiu Dao follows, staring at the bright lights of mysterious wealth city. Long Chiu Dao can't help but feel puzzled. Isn't it too early? The night has just begun. Strange indeed. Although Long Chiu Dao is puzzled, he dutifully follows Xiao Tian, gradually approaching the palace where the Jia family resides. Meanwhile, in a more secluded residence in Mysterious Wealth City, the woman Xiao Tian previously saw, who resembles Zi Ruoyan, is pacing back and forth. Beside her, another short-haired woman is gesturing with a knife in hand. Several members of the Flower Head tribe are sitting nearby. Enough with the pacing, you're making me dizzy, says Lu Guixiang, the mother of the woman in blue. Yes, she's esteemed Purple Emperor's mother-in-law. The woman in the blue robe is Shua Ruyin. Mom, aren't you worried? Dad has been gone for so long. Shua Ruyin pauses her pacing to look at her mother. Don't underestimate your father, Lu Guixiang replies, shaking her head. He used to be the god of wealth, you know. Upon hearing Lu Guixiang's words, the members of the Flower Head tribe nod in agreement. Indeed, despite the city's expensive real estate, your father, Shua Fugue, bought a residence without a second thought. He even purchased the three neighboring properties to avoid disturbances. Just then, they hear a sound from the direction of the front gate. A portly Shua Fugue returns. Dad, how did it go? Shua Ruyin asks anxiously. Everything is set. As soon as I crush this jade token, they will get the signal to cause a disturbance in Mysterious Wealth City, plunging it into chaos. That will give us the perfect opportunity to rescue our son-in-law. Lu Guixiang flexes her shoulders. I haven't exercised my skills in a long time. I wonder if I can still move freely. Shua Ruyin clenches her fists and looks towards the enormous palace in the sky. I'm more concerned about whether Bro Z can hold on. Don't worry, we will all get out of this safely. Shua Fugui walks over and tousles his daughter's hair. With your mom and dad here, you have nothing to fear. Dad, I'm not a child anymore, Shua Ruyin retorts. Shua Fugui continues to look at his daughter with a cheerful demeanor. In my eyes, you'll always be my little girl. I'm very sorry. If it weren't for rescuing us from the hands of the Void Bandits, you wouldn't have exposed your tracks. The leading woman from the Flower Head tribe begins, letting out a sigh full of regret. 
regret. Shuri and lifts her head, waving her hand at the woman. You don't need to blame yourself. This has nothing to do with you. What we didn't expect was how well informed the Jia family of Mysterious Wealth City is. They ambushed us even before we reached the region. Bro Z was captured and taken away because he was trying to protect all of us. Now that we have identified where our son-in-law is being held and have arranged a rescue plan, the moment Mysterious Wealth City falls into chaos will be our best opportunity to free him. Just then, an earth-shattering roar resounds throughout the vast skies of Mysterious Wealth City. Everyone looks up to see the floating palace above, the high and mighty residence of the Jia family. Its defense formations have been shattered with a deafening blast that echoes in all directions. Xiao Tian has shattered the Jia family's defensive formation. Supreme Benevolent King of Hell Deity Xiao Tian is here. The Jia family, tasked with guarding the second line, is acting like a band of thieves. I can no longer tolerate your heinous acts. Today, I am here to administer justice. I'm willing to give the Jia family a chance to repent. Everyone in Mysterious Wealth City, bear witness to see if the Jia family can be saved. As this deafening declaration echoes, everyone looks up at the sky towards Xiao Tian, stunned. The protective formation around the Jia family's celestial palace has been blasted open. Their faces show a mixture of shock and euphoria. Finally, someone has come to put the oppressive Jia family in their place. Shue Fugui and Lu Gui Xiang are shocked at first, but then elated. Isn't this fortunate? We were just considering whether we would have a chance to take action. Now the opportunity has come. It's time to make a move. Hold on, let's wait. Shua Rian instead remains calm, looking up at the sky. The person who shattered the formation must be very powerful. Let's not act hastily. They probably have some kind of dispute with the Jia family. Let this powerful individual take the lead in conflict with the Jia family. When they're fully engaged, we'll seize the opportunity to move. Hearing his daughter, Shua Fugui nods in agreement. Lu Gui Xiang is holding a machete, eyeing the palace above. This supreme benevolent king of hell deity Xiao Tian is indeed impressive. People with great power really can do as they please. While we have to be cautious, he just charged straight in. I kind of like that audacity. Upon hearing her mother, Shua Rian nods in agreement. Indeed, too audacious. Lu Gui Xiang is speechless for a moment, so you only heard the part about being audacious, ha? Huh? At this moment, Xiao Tian arrives at the celestial palace with Long Chiodao. So this is where the Jia family lives. Xiao Tian looks around and finds the scenery quite pleasing, akin to a fairy palace. Lord Xiao, didn't you say we should act cautiously, not rashly? Xiao Tian looks at Long Chiodao, puzzled. Yes, so what's the problem? Shouldn't we have deciphered the formation quietly and sneaked into this Jia family palace to find the key personnel? And then, Long Chiodao makes a slicing gesture across his neck. Xiao Tian frowns at Long Chiodao. We are on the side of justice. We are here to sweep away the darkness and deal with the cancer that is the Jia family. How could we act like thieves? Moreover, when we came to the Jia family's place, a formation was blocking us. Isn't it logical and in line with procedures that I blasted it open with a punch? How can you think that's rash? Faced with Xiao Tian's counter question, Long Chiodao opens his mouth, but doesn't know how to rebut. After the formation was broken, I conducted a careful analysis of the situation. Breaking the formation would definitely alert them. So why not just announce it openly to the world? The people in the mysterious Wealth Mountain region must have suffered greatly under the Jia family's tyranny. Perhaps many are on the verge of emotional collapse. This is the perfect stage for education. It can let everyone know that darkness can't overcome light, and evil can't defeat justice. After careful consideration, I've decided to let this good deed spread far and wide to convey kindness and justice. You can't possibly think that I'm doing this just to gain fame, can you? As the formation explodes like fireworks, Jia Jingjing, who was originally meditating, is suddenly awakened. The moment he opens his eyes, he sees the core of the entire formation hub shatter completely. For a moment, Jia Jingjing feels disoriented. Was the defensive formation that I spent a fortune on building just broken? Then Xiao Tian's voice reverberates throughout the city. You, the Jia family, have done countless unscrupulous deeds. I, Supreme Benevolent King of Hell Deity Xiao Tian, am here to teach you how to be human. As Jia Jingjing leaves, the bound esteemed purple emperor suddenly opens his eyes and stares at his departing figure, murmuring softly, Supreme Benevolent King of Hell Deity Xiao Tian, quite an intimidating name. However, how could I, with my esteemed imperial lineage, be so easily stripped away? Esteemed purple emperor is full of confidence. As he speaks, the chains of the formation binding him suddenly burst into flames. The blood that was being drained from him starts burning as well. These burning flames of blood are crazily absorbing the spiritual energy from the formation's core, flowing back into his body. With each flame that merges into the esteemed purple emperor, his aura increases slightly. Seeing this, esteemed purple emperor breaks into a satisfied smile. I originally planned to wait for my wife to rescue me, using the power of my bloodline to erode the Jia family's formation and escape with her help. I didn't expect someone to intervene. I can't miss this opportunity. Feeling the surge of power within him, esteemed purple emperor glances at the formation. The Jia family really has something. Even the elder of the Shua family couldn't strip away my imperial bloodline, yet this emperor of the mysterious wealth mountain range has such sophisticated me.
means, the Jia family must have a mastermind behind them. Anyway, I should first focus on escaping. Saying this, esteemed Purple Emperor takes a deep breath. His imperial aura bursts forth, causing the formation within the entire hall to wobble. Meanwhile, at the square of the Jia family's residence, Xiao Tian and Long Chiu Dao look ahead. Finally, someone arrives, led by Jia Benfu. Jia Benfu is almost going insane. He thought they had agreed to meet tomorrow. So why have they come tonight? Does this mean even the strong can go back on their words? Soon, other strong members of the Jia family arrive one after another. Each has an impressive aura. Long Chiu Dao takes a quick look around. The leading elder is at level 20, while the others average around level 18. Jia Jingjing fixes his gaze on Xiao Tian. But before he can speak, Xiao Tian interrupts. My good grandson, why are you standing there? Your grandpa is here. Won't you come and greet me? Jia Benfu nearly collapses, holding his face as he trembles and shakes his head frantically. That's not what was said. That's not what was said. The other Jia family elders exchange puzzled glances. What is going on? Did Jia Benfu just acknowledge a stranger as an elder? Seeing no response, Xiao Tian's face darkens. My good grandson, are you planning to deny me? At these words, Jia Benfu finally snaps out of it, looking at Xiao Tian with a face full of horror. Immediately after, Jia Benfu bends his knees and gracefully slides to kneel at Xiao Tian's feet, pointing at Jia Jingjing and excitedly shouting, Grandpa, your good grandson has been waiting eagerly for you. This old man is trying to harm you. Jia Jingjing was stunned. This is the successor I've taken a liking to? Is he the one to whom I'm going to entrust the future of the Jia family? Seeing Jia Benfu's face full of happiness and belonging, both Xiao Tian and Long Chiu Dao's eyes widen as they stare at him in disbelief. After a moment, Long Chiu Dao scratches his head and asks, Lord Xiao, what's going on? I've never seen anything like this before. Xiao Tian shrugs and shakes his head. To be honest, this is my first time encountering something like this as well. Xiao Tian quickly adjusts his mood and communicates with Long Chiu Dao through telepathy. Remember the monitoring formation you set up earlier when we were slowly rising? Is it ready? Long Chiu Dao pauses for a moment, recalling the Skynet mirror formation he had set up. Lord Xiao, don't worry. With just a signal from you, I can let all the citizens of Mysterious Wealth Mountain City see the ugly face of the Jia family. At this moment, Jia Benfu suddenly starts wailing again. Grandpa, your grandson didn't lie to you. That old man has activated something called the Jade Shatter Formation. That Jade Shatter Formation is incredible. It can sacrifice the lives of a billion beings in Mysterious Wealth Mountain City to condense into a single strike against you. I wanted to leave the Sky Palace to inform you, but this old man was watching too closely and didn't give me the chance. Jia Jingjing is utterly dumbfounded. This kid has actually revealed all of it. Xiao Tian nods. Earlier, when I ascended to this Sky Palace, I did sense a sacrificial formation. Is it this Jade Shatter Formation you're talking about? Jia Benfu looks up proudly, as if he's been acknowledged. Yes, yes it is. A smirk forms at the corner of Xiao Tian's mouth as a plan springs to mind. Interesting. He then points at Jia Xingjing and questions. So, the head of the Jia family, is this how you use a formation intended to defend against external enemies? For your own selfish gain, you so easily wiped out the lives of so many innocent people in Mysterious Wealth Mountain City? Caught red-handed, Jia Xingjing is momentarily stunned, and the other powerful figures in the Jia family look at him in disbelief. Patriarch, is this true? This is no joking matter. However, Jia Xingjing reveals a smug smile. A joke? It's just a mere formation. We've been consuming all the resources coming from the United Alliance of a hundred tribes for years. Each time, haven't you all followed me, filling your bellies and greasing your lips? What's there to be surprised about now? So what if we sacrifice a billion lives? What's the problem? Jia Xingjing's face contorts, showing no regard for the lives of ordinary people. Xiao Tian then gives Long Chiu Dao a look that says now's the time. Activate the formation. I want to socially annihilate them. Oblivious to what's happening, Jia Xingjing continues his impassioned speech. They are but a bunch of lowly beings. It's their honor to be sacrificed to the Jade Shatter Formation. If anyone investigates, we can simply say the formation was used to resist the Martial Spirit Army. Finally unable to hold back, Long Chiu Dao speaks up. Are you so sure that the Meteor Flame Battlefield will fall and you'll face off against the Martial Spirit Army? Jia Xingjing adopts a confident and fearless demeanor. Haven't you already figured out that our Jia family has colluded with the Martial Spirit Army? Why ask the obvious? What's the point? Just then, countless voices of anger are heard. What's the point? Are our lives meaningless to you? You Jias have bullied us enough as it is. Now you're even colluding with the Martial Spirit Army and threatening the Meteor Flame Battlefield? That's crossing the line. Only at this moment does Jia Xingjing notice the sky mirror overhead, realizing that everything he's said and done has been broadcast live. At this instant, countless citizens, upon hearing his words, are fervently shouting to tear down the Jia family. Long Chiu Dao turns his head and exchanges a glance with Xiao Tian, as expected of Lord Xiao. You come to the doorstep honorably and openly, yet you make the other party reveal their cards voluntarily, seething with anger. Jia Jingjing trembles. Fine, you'll regret this. You think you're clever? You think you're winning? Fool, you're courting death. At this moment, the mysterious Wealth Mountain range is filled with curses. Shuarui and 
and her family, along with many from the Flower Head tribe, come out to observe the situation in the streets. They see countless people pointing at Jia Xingjing in the sky mirror, cursing and yelling to bring down the Jia family. Shue Fugui pinches his chubby chin. I spent money to create chaos among the citizens of Mysterious Wealth Mountain City. Why does it feel like it was unnecessary? The disturbance here is much bigger than what I arranged. Shue Ruyin is also staring at the sky mirror. This is bigger than we thought. Jia Xingjing's secret has been fully exposed. He might try to kill everyone in Mysterious Wealth Mountain City to keep them quiet. The Jade Shatter Formation's sacrifice certainly won't stop now. Lu Guixiang steps forward, looking at her husband and daughter. Should we make our move? Both give her a surprised look. Not yet. The situation is certainly intense, but it's not chaotic enough. She then turns to Shue Fugui. Dad, your money isn't wasted. The kindling has been soaked in oil. It just needs a spark. Hearing this, Shue Fugui takes out a jade token. You make a good point, he says. And with a crunch, he shatters the token. Across Mysterious Wealth Mountain Range, all the people who've been paid off receive the signal. Simultaneously, the Jia family's second line defense force storms into the city, suppressing the crowd. This group, originally meant to defend the area from external threats, now turn their weapons against the very people they were supposed to protect. A torch in the hands of someone from the Flower Head tribe is abruptly cut down. Seeing this, the Flower Head tribe roars in anger. They've taken action. Wipe out these scum. The grievances of past days erupt at this moment. The shouts and battle cries gradually drown out the curses. The crowd is fearless, with Lord Xiao Tian taking a stand for justice and leading the way. What are we hesitating for? Are we all just going to cower until we die? Rise up. Topple the tyrannical Jia family. Today is the day. The situation increasingly spirals out of control. Jia Xingjing glances back at the chaotic scene. These so-called defenders are useless. They can't even suppress these dissident voices. However, as he looks at Xiao Tian, he thinks, once I get rid of this instigator, the others won't be able to make waves. Furious, Jia Xingjing clenches his teeth, a murderous aura emanating from his body. Everything he'd painstakingly built has been ruined by this shameless individual. Suddenly, Jia Xingjing speaks into the empty space behind him. Stop watching. If this situation isn't resolved, it won't be good for you either, right? Just as he finishes speaking, ripples appear in the air, and several figures materialize behind him. You've really screwed this up, haven't you? They belong to a race that Xiao Tian is quite familiar with, the Blood Grudge Clan, also Tier 20 Warriors. Yellow hair smirks. Looks like your good days are over. Hearing the mockery, Jia Xingjing narrows his eyes. First, think about how to clean up this mess. The cat's out of the bag. We need to kill to keep it quiet, to slow down the spread of the news. His expression turns malicious. I remember that the Blood Grudge Clan has a blood curse technique. It can trace people's loved ones through their blood, right? Yellow hair chuckles lightly. What? You want to search for his relatives? You're really petty. Petty? Jia Xingjing flexes his body. This guy has turned me into a public enemy. How could I possibly let him off? Suddenly, his voice comes to a halt. For some unknown reason, yellow hair swiftly appears in front of Xiao Tian, in a kneeling position no less. Xiao Tian casually extends his hand and grips his throat. It feels as if yellow hair had voluntarily delivered himself. What's going on? Jia Xingjing is dumbfounded. Are you all putting on a show here? One moment you're chatting beside me, and the next, you're in Xiao Tian's hands? Yellow hair takes a deep breath, his spiritual energy erupting instantly. His body reverberates with a rumbling sound as his muscles and the bursting red spiritual energy work in unison. Yellow hair summons a terrifying power and shouts, rise. However, he doesn't budge. Xiao Tian's hand seems like an unmovable sky, forever suppressing him. A silence descends on the scene. Panic starts to creep into Yellow Hair's mind. I'm a tier 20 warrior. Why can't I rise under the grip of this puny human? As if granting his wish, Xiao Tian slowly raises his hand and helps him to his feet. Yellow Hair finally experiences that unparalleled power. With a slight pressure from Xiao Tian's fingertips, Yellow Hair lets out a gut-wrenching scream. Jia Benfu, kneeling beside, has been shivering with fear. Watching Xiao Tian hoist Yellow Hair up like a little chicken, Jia Benfu is internally screaming. I knew it. I knew Xiao Tian was a monster. He corrects himself. No, he's not a monster. He's my grandfather. My mighty grandfather. Finally, Xiao Tian speaks. My purpose for coming here was to give them a lesson, to awaken their conscience. I didn't expect a menace like you to appear before we even started. It seems you are the backbone of the Jia family's evil doing. With that, Xiao Tian's hand holding yellow hair suddenly flicks upward. Yellow hair becomes a blur, rocketing skyward, even piercing through the clouds. His screams are endless. Subsequently, people hear Xiao Tian murmur, current power, seven ten thousandths. Jia Benfu is instantly dumbfounded, unable to believe what he's heard. My dear grandfather, you can control your power down to such a small fraction. While he's still in shock, Xiao Tian throws a punch into the sky. Space is torn asunder as a tangible attack surges upward. Yellow hair, hurled into the sky, feels a tremendous force rushing towards him. He watches as the space below shatters inch by inch. Yellow hair's heart tightens, sensing something terrible. The next second, an extremely terrifying force envelopes him completely. Blood power path. However, even though he is a tier 20 warrior and exhausts all his power, 
horror. He is still ruthlessly shattered. Yellow Hair screams in terror. No, don't. Just before dying, Yellow Hair loses all decorum and curses. Jia Jing Jing, you ageless beast. You idiot. You dragged me into this. You dog. His voice abruptly stops as his body violently bursts apart. The surrounding space also shatters into fragments like mirrors, emitting a crisp sound. Xiao Tian withdraws his fist and says to the people in front of him, Listen, ding ding, ding a ling. The bell is rung. It's time for class. Jia Jing Jing trembles all over, looking at Xiao Tian with eyes full of fear. He swallows hard, sweat constantly trickling down his forehead. Only now does he truly understand Jiao Benfu, truly worthy of being the successor I have my eye on. Grandson, you're a clever little devil. After casually crushing the strong warrior of the Blood Grudge clan, Xiao Tian nonchalantly brushes off his hands. The annoying guy has been dealt with. Now it's time for your Jia family to get schooled. Heaven is merciful. Even if you've committed heinous crimes, as long as you can do a few things, I'm willing to give you a chance for redemption. Jia Jing Jing can't control his trembling. He thinks to himself, is there really such good fortune? Could this be the quirk of a powerful person? A preference for urging people to be virtuous? He makes a secret resolution. He must seize this opportunity to survive. Xiao Tian extends a finger and begins. First, relinquish your position as the guardian of the mysterious wealth mountain range. Then, transfer the mysterious wealth mountain range to me as compensation for my emotional distress. After all, you've colluded with the martial spirit army to secretly plot against me, causing irreplaceable harm to my spirit. Hearing this, Jia Xing Jing smiles broadly on the surface, but inside he's cursing. This is utter nonsense. The agreement I made with the martial spirit army was decades ago, probably before you were even born. How could it have been aimed at you? But for the sake of staying alive, he maintains composure. Don't be angry. Don't be angry. As long as I can save my life, whatever he says is right. Give whatever he wants. Thinking this, Jia Jing Jing quickly bows and agrees. If you say so, it's no problem. I'll immediately issue a notice declaring you the lord of the mysterious wealth mountain range. At this point, Long Chiu Dao suddenly speaks up. The mysterious wealth mountain range has already formed a world heart. You should transfer this world heart to Lord Xiao. Hearing these words, Xiao Tian is visibly startled. What is a world heart? The world heart is formed by the world energy of a domain world. It is the control nexus of a domain world. Once controlled, one can control everything within the domain world, aiding one's cultivation and enhancing combat ability. Jia Xing Jing is dumbstruck. How does he know that I have the world heart? This is known only to the martial spirit army and the Jia family. Even the United Alliance of a Hundred Tribes Council of Elders isn't aware of this. How could an outsider know? Seeing him not responding, Long Chiu Dao chides. Are you saying that you didn't form this world heart? Jia Jing Jing awkwardly smiles. How could that be? I was just about to hand over the world heart. Xiao Tian steps closer to Long Chiu Dao, then bring it out. The next second, an odd-looking stone appears in front of Jia Jing Jing. The stone emits overwhelming fluctuations. This is the world heart of the mysterious wealth mountain range. Xiao Tian curiously reaches out to touch it. So this is the so-called world heart? Jia Jing Jing is startled. Is he an idiot? This is the world heart of the mysterious wealth mountain range. Reaching out directly means enduring the enormous pressure of the entire mountain range. And no one is stopping him? Does he really think he's so powerful that he can withstand the pressure of an entire domain world? Jia Jing Jing suddenly feels some anticipation. This is overly confident. Ha ha ha. I can't wait to see you destroy yourself. If he gets crushed, the Jia family will be safe. Crush him. Under Jia Jing Jing's expectant gaze, Xiao Tian casually picks up the world heart with his fingers. This thing actually looks quite nice. Jia Jing Jing feels as if he's been struck by lightning. What on earth is happening? That's the world heart, representing the immense pressure of an entire domain world. And he's just holding it between his fingers? Now holding the world heart in his hand, he knows that the mountain range is his. Jia Jing Jing, however, has other ideas. The world heart represents the natural laws of a domain world. You think just because you say it's yours, it becomes yours? That's incredibly arrogant. However, the next moment, Jia Jing Jing watches as his control over the mysterious wealth mountain range slowly drifts out of his body and directly enters Xiao Tian. Jia Jing Jing is dumbstruck. What just happened? My control was taken without my consent? Xiao Tian is also momentarily stunned, but then he sees the world heart disappear into his hand, absorbed along with the control. Now that I possess the world heart, I can sense everything within the domain of the mysterious wealth mountain range clearly. This is much more convenient than relying on my physical eyes. Xiao Tian nods in satisfaction. You've done well in fulfilling my first request to become the lord of the mysterious wealth mountain range. It shows me you're committed to changing your ways. He then holds up two fingers. My second request is for you to fully understand the meaning of responsibility and duty. At this, Jia Jing Jing looks utterly confused, having no idea what Xiao Tian is referring to. Xiao Tian explains with a smile, the meteor flame battlefield up ahead is in dire need of reinforcements. As the defensive army for the second line, it's time for you to go into battle. As the saying goes, raise troops for a thousand days, use them for a moment. Now is the best time for you to redeem yourselves. Hearing this, Jia Jing Jing quickly agrees, rest assured, once we get to the meteor flame,
flame battlefield. We'll fight the enemy with all our might and live up to your teachings. However, inside, he's laughing triumphantly. This is a godsend. If the united alliance of a hundred tribes can't be relied upon, I can always switch sides to the martial spirit army. As soon as we reach the meteor flame battlefield, I'll join them, and my family will be safe. Unaware of Jia Xingjing's thoughts, Xiao Tian tells Long Chiu Dao, See, there are no truly evil people in this world. With patience and love, even the most wicked can be reformed. Long Chiu Dao has his doubts, thinking that Jia Xingjing doesn't seem like the kind of person to mend his ways. No matter how crafty he is, could he really outwit Xiao Tian? Next, Xiao Tian turns to Jia Xingjing. Since you've agreed to go to the meteor flame battlefield to redeem yourselves, get moving. Eagerly, Jia Xingjing agrees. All right, all right, shall we start packing and head to the meteor flame battlefield? Xiao Tian suddenly waves his hand. No need for all that fuss. He then unexpectedly draws a long knife. You can simply use this knife to commit seppuku. With a swift motion, he stabs the knife into the ground, scaring the wits out of Jia Xingjing and his people. Jia Xingjing hesitates. Lord Xiao, what do you mean? Xiao Tian shakes his head. I can't be certain that you won't collaborate with the martial spirit army once you get to the battlefield. You can stain this knife with your blood, and I'll send someone else to use this knife on the battlefield. That's equivalent to you fighting against the enemy. This is the way you'll atone for your sins. You won't even have to travel far. Isn't that great? Hearing that Xiao Tian wants him to use the knife to commit seppuku, Jia Xingjing is clearly incredulous. You're joking, right? Xiao Tian points to the long knife in front of him. Nope, I'm very serious. You can use your blood and lives to imbue this knife. Then Bai Qing will take it and fight against the enemy. Your family's spirit will be with her, giving her courage. In this way, you can leave behind a good reputation, making your atonement meaningful. Honestly, I can't think of any reason for you to refuse. Jia Xingjing is stunned. Xiao Tian turns to Long Chiu Dao. Can you think of any reason? Long Chiu Dao shakes his head. I can't. This is such a perfect solution. Even I can't refuse. Jia Xingjing feels a surge of anger rising. He's treating us like animals for a blood sacrifice. He's trampling on the dignity of our Jia family. At this thought, Jia Xingjing can't help but shout, is having power an excuse to do whatever you want? Long Chiu Dao calmly replies, having power does allow you to do whatever you want. Besides, isn't that what you've been doing? Jia Xingjing is speechless, gritting his teeth. Just then, Xiao Tian rubs his forehead and says, oh right, before you commit seppuku, tell me where your treasury is. I need to take some compensation for my services. I've traveled a long way to give you advice. Naturally, I should be paid. Everyone is silent at this audacious demand. Even Long Chiu Dao seems to be uncomfortable. Jia Xingjing is about to explode. Is this human language? Is this something a sane person would say? He's trying to settle scores on behalf of those who died on the meteor flame battlefield. With me, who colluded with the martial spirit army. But just at that moment, Jia Xingjing's face changes. Each and every one of you here, don't even think about running. You thought my humility meant I'd really admitted my guilt? I was just buying time. Now is my moment to counterattack. Jia Xingjing clasps his hands together, and a blood red formation appears behind him. He shouts, Jade Shatter Formation, rise. A humming sound resonates, and a mysterious force starts gathering, draining everything from unidentified sources, life, spiritual energy, essence, all being sucked away and condensing into Jia Xingjing. Everyone in the Jia family, even Jia Benfu who's kneeling on the ground, can feel their life force, spiritual energy, and blood being plundered. Jia Xingjing's crazed voice echoes, the martial spirit army taught me another use for the Jade Shatter formation, sacrificed the entire clan to empower me alone. You didn't see this coming, did you, Xiao Tian? This time next year will be the anniversary of your death. At this moment, the withering Jia family members all shout, Grandpa, no, Jia Xingjing, may you die horribly. In contrast, Jia Xingjing's condition keeps improving, his aura growing stronger and reaching new heights. Long Chiu Dao watches in astonishment. This man is shameless. He actually killed his own clan with his own hands. Xiao Tian snorts coldly. This isn't the Jade Shatter formation. This is clearly a blood-drinking formation that sacrifices clan members to achieve a desperate turnaround. Hearing this, Long Chiu Dao turns his head in surprise. Xiao Tian, when did you become so knowledgeable about formations? I once obtained the ancient texts from the ancient god tribe. It includes records from the Soul Intent clan, where the blood-drinking formation is documented. While the two are talking, Jia Benfu and the other Jia family members have already lost their lives. Jia Jingjing exhales deeply, seemingly feeling very relieved, lowering his head to look at his hands. He can't help but laugh in a manic state. This power, it's intoxicating. Take out the holy dragon relic and activate the formation. Although he doesn't know the significance of this action, Long Chiu Dao obediently takes out the relic. Once he has done as Xiao Tian instructed, Jia Jingjing suddenly moves, drawing a long knife and laughing. I'm quite skilled with knives as well. You'll regret this. Xiao Tian uninterestedly picks at his ear and says, All right, begin your performance. Just as Jia Jingjing raises his knife and appears to charge forward, shouting, prepare to die, Long Chiu Dao hurries to stand in front of Xiao Tian, saying, my lord, please step back. But the next second, the previously calm space warps abruptly. A force of spatial translocation envelopes 
warps Jia Xingjing. Before Long Chiodao can react, Jia Xingjing has already used the power to warp through space and escape. Long Chiodao is speechless. The old man knew he couldn't win, so he used the power gained from sacrificing his clan to escape, even burning his own spiritual energy to speed up. How decisive. Such a pity. Xiao Tian yawned. Now there's no need to waste energy to chase after him and bring him back. Sadly, Lord Xiao Tian had already anticipated his escape. Once the Holy Dragon Relic Formation is fully activated, it automatically detects any spatial translocations in the vicinity. It effortlessly manipulates the enemy within the palm of one's hand. Truly impressive, my lord. Immediately after, Xiao Tian pulls out the long knife stuck in the ground and looks at Long Chiu Dao, saying, release him. The next second, Jia Xingjing is spat out from the Holy Dragon Relic. Seeing the familiar faces in front of him, Jia Xingjing is stunned. Didn't I escape? How am I back here? Xiao Tian grabs his shoulder and says, enough running. Now what you need to do is tell us the location of your treasure vault. Pay your tuition and correct your ways as part of your homework. We're all grown men here. Why are you dilly-dallying about this knife? Saying this, Xiao Tian hands the knife to Jia Xingjing. The message couldn't be clearer. Jia Xingjing, holding the long knife, is so scared that he bursts into tears. Please spare my life. I'll tell you everything. I'll say it all. However, Xiao Tian calmly instructs Long Chiu Dao to take out a recording formation to document all of Jia Xingjing's crimes. Long Chiu Dao activates the formation and says, I'm ready, Lord Xiao. Hearing this, Xiao Tian looks down at Jia Xingjing and says, Go ahead, tell us in detail about everything you've done. Jia Xingjing nods quickly. Yes, I'll tell you now. I once colluded with the Martial Spirit Army on the battlefield and plotted to kill my father, the first generation guardian. I took his place. With the tacit approval of the United Alliance of a Hundred Tribes Elder Council, I've been secretly skimming off resources from the Meteor Flame battlefield. I even withheld resources that were supposed to be regularly and specifically sent to the battlefield. My level 20 was built up using these resources. Is there anything else? I also sold some unique resources and information to the Martial Spirit Army. Hearing this, both Xiao Tian and Wang Chiu Dao look at him with faces full of disdain and anger. This man deserves to die. Facing the gazes of the two men, Jia Xingjing steals himself and asks, I've said everything that I should say. Can you forgive my past mistakes? I really, really know I was wrong. Xiao Tian takes a step forward and grabs his wrist. Of course, I'm willing to forgive you and I believe you will mend your ways. Jia Xingjing. Saying this, Xiao Tian slowly lifts the hand holding the knife. The next second, he suddenly applies force and Jia Xingjing unwittingly stabs the knife into his own chest. His eyes are filled with disbelief and regret. Pulling out the knife, Xiao Tian disdainfully says, I can forgive you, but whether the soldiers you've killed and the innocent people harmed by the Jia family will forgive you, well, you'll have to go ask them yourself. In his haze, Jia Xingjing seems to see his father before his death and can't help but call out, my father. However, the last thing his father said to him before dying was a curse wishing him an ill fate. Xiao Tian looks at him speechlessly. I'm not your father. Don't shout randomly. Upon hearing this, Jia Xingjing spits out a mouthful of old blood. You scoundrel, I'm dying, and you still take advantage? After saying this, Jia Xingjing falls to the ground, lifeless. Unconcerned, Xiao Tian sheets the knife and calls to Long Chiu Dao. Let's go. I just saw through the world heart of the mysterious wealth mountain range that someone is trapped in the formation behind us. Meanwhile, inside the heavenly palace of the mysterious wealth mountain range, a steamed purple emperor is tugging at formation chains, attempting to break the formation and escape. Seeing the two figures enter, a steamed purple emperor stops and asks, My brother, could you be the supreme benevolent king of hell deity Xiao Tian? Would you mind if? Xiao Tian raises his hand to cut him off. Hold on before you call me brother. Looking at the familiar binding method, a familiar feeling rises in his heart. In that familiar formation, those familiar golden hairs, Xiao Tian seems to awaken from a dream. You wouldn't happen to have the surname Z, would you? Esteemed Purple Emperor's heart stirs. This guy starts by asking about my surname. Could he be here to catch me? No, I have to change my appearance. Can't let him recognize me. The next second, Esteemed Purple Emperor activates a secret technique to change his appearance. By the time Xiao Tian comes over to check, he looks completely different from Z Ruan. Could he really not be my father-in-law? Likewise, Esteemed Purple Emperor starts speaking. My good brother, my name is Zhou Shintong. However, upon looking up, he sees Xiao Tian grinning from ear to ear. Isn't he here to capture me? Why is he so happy to know I'm not esteemed Purple Emperor? Shouldn't he be disappointed? Xiao Tian has no idea what he's thinking and excitedly grabs the chains of the formation. Hold on, I'll come and save you right away. Esteemed Purple Emperor gets a fright and hurriedly speaks up. Wait, brother, this formation is strong and a bit strange, but it's already too late. Xiao Tian starts to apply force to the chains, and the formation immediately reacts. A red light shoots directly into Xiao Tian's mind. Puppy quickly warns, Master, your soul is under attack. According to the ancient god tribe scriptures, the formation that binds this man in front of you is called the Soul Locking Golden Strike Formation. This is a method commonly used by the ancient god tribe. It appears to bind the physical body, 
but it actually seals the soul. Xiao Tian is displeased. It's the ancient god tribe again? Never mind. It's not important. But a soul attack? Why don't I feel anything? Because your soul is too strong. The soul shock from this soul locking golden strike formation is like scratching an itch through a boot for you. It's insignificant. Puppy explains. I see. Xiao Tian murmurs, continuing to apply force. The next second, the chains are directly crushed by Xiao Tian. A steamed purple emperor watches this scene, completely stunned. The formation chains that even I couldn't deal with were just torn apart by this man. Xiao Tian calmly speaks. Alright, now that you're free, go reunite with your family. A look of admiration fills a steamed purple emperor's face. Benefactor, I cannot forget your life-saving grace. How can I ever repay you? Xiao Tian dismissively waves his hand. Don't be like that. I, supreme benevolent king of hell deity Xiao Tian, do good deeds without seeking fame or reward. Go back. Your family must be worried about you. A steamed purple emperor clasps his fists. Thank you, brother Xiao. May we meet again someday to enjoy wine and good company. Watching the departing figure of a steamed purple emperor, Xiao Tian feels sentimental. Another day of doing good deeds. How nice. Long Chiu Dao, who's beside him, strokes his beard. Something feels off. Why do I find the aura on that person familiar? At this point, Xiao Tian nudges Long Chiu Dao with his elbow. What are you daydreaming about? Let's go. It's time to collect the tuition from the Jia family. Xiao Tian heads straight to the Jia family treasure vault, standing in front of the door. Suddenly, Long Chiu Dao remembers, my lord, we don't seem to have a key. Xiao Tian casually turns his head and looks at him. Are you stupid? What do we need a key for when I'm here? Saying this, Xiao Tian steps forward, grabs the doorknob, and gently twists it, lifting the entire door off its hinges. Long Chiu Dao is completely stunned. It seems I've underestimated him. Soon, the sight inside the treasure vault leaves both of them dumbfounded. The Jia family really hasn't skimped on their corruption. Looking at the room filled with rare and valuable items, Xiao Tian size. These are all things that the Jia family exchanged for human lives. It looks like I'll have to give them some extra tutoring after class. Given these resources, I should do something more for Jia Xingjing and the Jia family. Long Chiu Dao looks at him incredulously. Lord Xiao, what do you mean? Xiao Tian gives a faint smile. I plan to make a statue of Jia Xingjing in the busiest part of mysterious Wealth Mountain City. Next to it, I'll erect a stone tablet detailing all of his past deeds. I want this statue to suffer public humiliation and physical abuse on Jia Xingjing's behalf. That way, it will be like he's atoning for his sins. If Jia Xingjing were still alive, he'd probably be moved to tears. Long Chiu Dao is speechless. Whether he would be moved or not, I don't know. But if someone were to suddenly come back to life out of sheer anger, it would definitely be your doing. As Long Chiu Dao ponders, Xiao Tian suddenly turns around and calls out, What are you still thinking about? Let's go. Long Chiu Dao is startled. Leave? Are we taking anything? But when he turns his head, he's dumbfounded. What the? You've already taken everything? Xiao Tian looks serious. Don't doubt my abilities. I can endlessly refer fresh your understanding of what's possible. Let's go. However, Long Chiu Dao shakes his head. Lord Xiao, it might not be appropriate for us to just leave. The mysterious Wealth Mountain Range is a secondary defense line. Its position is too special. If we just depart, what happens to this mess? All of the Jia family are dead. The mountain range is now like a dragon without a head, and there's a bunch of unruly garrison troops. These are all troubles. Xiao Tian nonchalantly shrugs. To set the mysterious Wealth Mountain Range on the right path, a strong leader is needed. Clearly, I'm not that person. Just as Long Chiu Dao is about to say something. Xiao Tian cuts him off. I can't do it. But what I can do is move the holy demon domain over and merge it with the mysterious wealth mountain range. By then, Zi Ruoyan will definitely figure out a way to deal with the problem of insubordination. Hearing this, Long Chiu Dao is flabbergasted. Only you would dare to propose such an idea. Merging two enormous domain worlds? How can you even dare to think like that? Lord Xiao, such things shouldn't be done recklessly. What if something goes wrong and both domains explode? Xiao Tian looks a bit puzzled. It shouldn't explode, right? Plus, us. If we merge it, the second defense line will directly belong to our holy demon domain. The title of garrison commander can go to Zi Ruoyan, and the United Alliance of a Hundred Tribes could also send resources to us. Isn't it good for us to guard the second defense line? Long Chiu Dao's eyes light up. Exactly. Why let the benefits go to others? We're on the same side as Bai Qing, which means we're also aligned with leader Su of the United Alliance of a Hundred Tribes. If the Jia family can take these resources, so can we. However, Long Chiu Dao looks at Xiao Tian with a sly expression. Why would you want to give the garrison commander position to Emperor Z? Xiao Tian calmly replies, If I give it to Luo Feng Yuan, she'd probably turn the second defense line into an assault camp and constantly lead the garrison troops into battle. There's no way I could give it to her. Now, you go handle the subsequent matters. Reorganize Mysterious Wealth Mountain City and integrate the garrison troops. Find some local people to temporarily manage the Mysterious Wealth Mountain range. Once that's all set, we'll go to the Hundred Flower Domain with Hua Kai Tu. We'll merge it with Mysterious Wealth Mountain range first as a test. If everything goes well, we'll move the holy demon domain. Yawning, Xiao Tian adds, I need to get some sleep. Staying up late is bad for the skin, and I still need to rely on this face to get by.
why. Standing beside him, Long Chiodao is speechless. Lazy is lazy. What's all this talk about bad skin affecting your ability to get by? You're quite at ease after assigning all these tasks. It's always easy for the leader to give orders, but the subordinates are the ones who have to run around. Sighing, Long Chiodao puts on the mask Xiao Tian gave him and heads to Mysterious Wealth Mountain City. Let me use his dead body to intimidate the people of Mysterious Wealth Mountain City. It will also let them know who saved them from their miserable situation. The next second, Long Chiodao displays his dragon aura, releasing a majestic and domineering dragon spirit. The hearts of everyone still fighting below are instantly shaken. Long Chiodao then announces to everyone, the criminal ringleader Jia Xingjing has been executed by my lord, the great deity Xiao Tian. In a small courtyard, Lu Guixiang, Shui Ruyan and others are staring blankly at the heavenly net mirror. Such a powerful dragon aura. Who is this masked man? Such a strong figure. Is he really just a follower of that previous supreme benevolent king of hell deity? Jia Jingjing, the head of the Jia family and the keeper of the second defense line. Is he really dead? But if the battle is over, why hasn't Z brother come back yet? Just then, a stranger bursts through the door, loudly calling out for Shuarian. Hearing the familiar voice, Shuarian looks surprised. Esteemed purple emperor, why do you have Zhou Shindong's face? She embraces his arm. Let's go inside and talk. Once inside the courtyard, Shue Fugue and others are confused. Daughter, who is this? Esteemed purple emperor quickly cancels his secret technique. After a burst of golden light, he rubs his sore face. This secret technique for changing one's appearance really hurts. Who came up with this? A masochist. Shue Fugue then asks, Son-in-law, why did you change like this? I've never seen such a technique to change one's appearance before. Esteemed purple emperor scratches his head. Before I was rescued, I wasn't sure whether that supreme benevolent king of hell deity named Xiao Tian was friend or foe. To avoid revealing my identity, I had to change my appearance. Shui Ruyin interjects. You met Xiao Tian, the powerful figure from Heavenly Palace? Not just met, he was the one who saved me. He even asked if my surname was Z. Shui Ruyin then realizes, no wonder you had to change your appearance. Fortunately, you didn't reveal yourself. Did he really come to capture you? Esteemed Purple Emperor shakes his head. It doesn't seem like it. When I lied about my name, he seemed quite pleased that I wasn't a Z, and I also felt strangely close to him for some reason. Shue Fugue finally explains, some people naturally make you feel close to them. Don't overthink it. This Xiao Tian is probably a young master from some major clan. Otherwise, how could he have such a powerful follower? Esteemed Purple Emperor nods. Alright, let's not worry about whether he's from some major family. We need to leave quickly. We can't stay in the mysterious Wealth Mountain range for long. Let's head to the Holy Demon Domain. Sometime later, within the Heavenly Palace, Xiao Tian is sound asleep and quite comfortable. Below him, a large group of rebels from the mysterious Wealth Mountain range are lined up, their faces bruised and swollen. Long Chiodao stands above them, reprimanding, I told you to stop, but you didn't listen. I had to step in and beat you to a pulp before you'd listen. How shameless are you? Nobody dares to breathe a word. We were just caught up in the fight with the garrison. We didn't even hear you shout to stop. Suddenly, Long Chiodao raises his hand, and everyone instinctively recoils. Long Chiodao clears his throat satisfactorily. Let's not beat around the bush. Lord Xiao has completely wiped out the Jia family. From now on, the mysterious Wealth Mountain range belongs to Lord Xiao. In the near future, it will be ruled by a power named the Great Flame Dynasty. Depending on territorial circumstances, some areas might be allocated to the Primordial Demon Kingdom, but generally, it will all be under the joint jurisdiction of the Empress Union. Long Chiodao then takes out a bunch of small books. These are the general rules of the Empress Union, and some governmental regulations. Familiarize yourselves with them, as you will assist me in governing the mysterious Wealth Mountain range. Everyone takes a book and continues to listen to Long Chiodao. Remember, Lord Xiao tolerates no sand in his eyes. Crooked scoundrels will suffer terribly at his hands. You should know that Jia Xingjing was emotionally shattered before his death, begging for mercy with a face full of tears. The crowd is stunned. Mouth Sagape. What exactly did that supreme benevolent king of hell deity do to make Jia Xingjing break down like that? Long Chiodao stares back at the crowd. Do you have anything to say? No, no. Everyone shakes their heads and immediately begins reading the books in their hands. The only sound left is the flipping of pages. Soon someone exclaims. Claims, Great Flame Dynasty, Primordial Demon Kingdom, Empress Union, this is simply amazing. If we really govern the mysterious Wealth Mountain Range according to these books, it couldn't be better. Exactly. Good days for the mysterious Wealth Mountain Range are coming. Yes, those capable of overthrowing the Jia family aren't necessarily worse than them. Long Chiodao speaks at an opportune moment. In the next few days, we must work well together to sort out the affairs of the mysterious Wealth Mountain Range. We can't let Lord Xiao down. Take my advice. You can offend anyone but not Lord Xiao. After all, you wouldn't want to experience what it's like to be worse than dead, would you? Also, take these pills. For seven days, you won't need to eat, drink, or sleep. Use these seven days wisely to accomplish what Lord Xiao has assigned. Understood? Everyone stands at attention and responds loudly. Understood. Long Chiodao is extremely satisfied. Look at that spirit. Indeed, it's me who managed to train someone.
someone so well in such a short time. The next day, Xiao Tian wakes up, stretches comfortably, and goes outside to see that Long Chiodao has already managed to set the mysterious Wealth Mountain range in order so quickly. Impressive efficiency, he thinks. As for the rest, he has no idea how many days it will take to accomplish everything. Let him handle it. I'll just enjoy some leisure time exploring, eating, and drinking for a few days. But if the people need help, all they have to do is shout Supreme Benevolent King of Hell Deity, and I'll appear to rescue them. Today, he answers the people's call to come and eliminate bandits. As soon as the bandits see the familiar mask, they immediately flee in terror, yelling for their lives. How did they let the Supreme Benevolent King of Hell Deity out? Weren't his subordinates the ones who've been dealing with bandits for the past three days? Why is he here himself today? They have no sense of martial virtue. Unfortunately, no matter how much they plead and cry, it won't save their fallen hearts. Xiao Tian unleashes a single punch. The sheer energy of it not only annihilates all the bandits, but also levels the mountains. He clenches his fist and looks back. Wasn't that easy? A single punch takes care of the mountain bandits. It took you all three days, and you still couldn't handle it? Long Chiodao remains silent, having long grown accustomed to such feats. The others, however, widen their eyes in awe and terror. Fortunately, the populace bursts into cheerful applause and eagerly waves at Xiao Tian. Deciding not to berate his subordinates any further, Xiao Tian waves back at the crowd. Long Chiodao is numb to the spectacle. Children are gathering around Xiao Tian. Clearly, the man is popular. However, once Lord Xiao integrates the Hundred Flower Domain and Mysterious Wealth Mountain into the Holy Demon Realm, the cultivation level of Holy Demon Emperor Luo Tao Tian, who is connected to the Holy Demon Realm, is likely to skyrocket. Meanwhile, esteemed Purple Emperor and others are on a flying boat approaching the boundary of the Holy Demon Realm. Shuefugui, standing at the bow of the boat, comments, This Holy Demon Realm looks enormous. Are mid-level worlds usually this large? Lu Guixiang chimes in, Not only that, but there seem to be fewer fragments of smaller worlds around. Esteemed Purple Emperor walks up to them. Based on Luo's guidance, this is undoubtedly the Holy Demon Realm. Once we pass through the boundary, everything will become clear. Soon, the guards inform them, after passing through the boundary, you'll see navigation markers. But remember, you can't pilot any void-flying spiritual tools within the city. To go to the primordial demon kingdom, turn left. For the Great Flame Dynasty, turn right. Everyone is puzzled. Turn right for the Great Flame Dynasty? What does that mean? Seeing them still confused, the guards impatiently urge, Why are you still standing here? You've completed the registration. Stop blocking the way. Moments later, they pass through the boundary and arrive inside the mainland. Shuefugue immediately feels the rich spiritual energy in the air. It's even denser than in many high-level worlds. This must also be in part thanks to the efforts of the Flower Head tribe. At this moment, Lu Guixiang suddenly interrupts. Now's not the time to be marveling at the spiritual energy. What's going on with this great flame dynasty? Wasn't it taken away by a powerful being? How did it end up in the holy demon realm? Esteemed purple emperor shakes his head. I have no idea. Besides, the great flame dynasty in this holy demon realm might not even be ours. After all, humans do live in the holy demon realm. Perhaps Luo just allowed them to establish this dynasty for fun? Suddenly, Shuarian points in a direction, exclaiming, Look, everyone hastily looks up to see a giant sign on a floating island. Alright, let's not jump to conclusions. We'll see for ourselves what's going on. The flying boat then follows the directions and continues flying forward.